Good evening. Welcome to uh, the Northampton City Council meeting f for uh, May 2nd, uh, 2013. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight. I'm presiding. Uh, we start with, before we convene the meeting, we're actually going to start with public comment. Um, and if you'll allow me, actually, I'll, I'll read a couple of letters from folks who weren't able to stay and speak. I'll read that first, and then we'll open up and go to the list. And then if you're not on the list, we'll open it up. Yes. Just a uh, Exhausting. point of order. I thought that those pursuant to the council rules would just be distributed and not read aloud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the <coughs> yeah. council? Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. These will be distributed. They'll become public documents, and if anyone's interested in seeing them, they're available online. So. So uh, the rules for public comment is you're given three minutes up there on the clock. We ask you to uh, speak civilly. Um, and that also, um, if you run over three minutes, if you're wrapping up, that's fine. If you're actually taking a breath for another long paragraph or another series of paragraphs, we're going to ask you to stop because, as you can plainly see, there's a substantial list here. A lot of people want to speak, and we want to give everyone an opportunity. The other thing is the council is not allowed to respond. Uh, or react. I mean, I'm sure they could. An eyebrow could go up, or something like that. But the fact is, is that if if you ask a question, it's going to stand as a rhetorical question because it will not be answered here. Uh, we're not deliberating yet. So, with that said, uh, when you when I call your name, please come up, state your name and address, and speak your piece. And first up is Nicholas Horton, please. So I'm Nicholas Horton, uh, 341 Prospect Street. I'm also the president of the Friends of Northampton Trails and Greenways. The rail trail network that the city council, the mayor's office, and the Office of Sustainability and Development have created over the past years are a huge benefit for Northampton. The set of paths are used for recreation and transportation year round. Thank you for plowing in the winter. It was a wonderful thing to be able to continue that. These have served as a major amenity for our community and draw people in, draw economic value. The council has another opportunity tonight to extend the Narwatic Rail Trail in Leeds, um, which will allow more kids to make their way to school, communities to bike to work, and families and tourists to explore this incredibly beautiful part of our community. I urge the council to extend the trail in Leeds, to acquire the easement to connect to South Main Street so that these paths will be preserved and accessible for our children and grandchildren. Again, I really appreciate what you've been doing. I'm really excited about what's being created and the possibilities for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, hi, my name is Neil Bastic. I'm a Bastic, re sorry. resident of Williamsburg at Three Village Hill Avenue. Um, I'm here today as the co-moderator of the Mill River Greenway Initiative, also in support of the proposed extensions to the Leeds uh, Rail Trails. Um, I could rattle off dozens of reasons why I'm personally invested in seeing the rail trail extended and improved at the moment. The top of mind thing for me is that I'm a web entrepreneur, I'm starting a small business, um, and I need to look for office space. The number one criteria in that, beyond sort of a robust internet connection, is the bikeability between my house and access to the other things around town that I need to conduct my business. Um, I urge you to look past the simplistic rhetorical traps, um, bicycles versus private property owners, and see the bigger picture here. Um, that this rail trail is really a vital part of the social and economic fabric of our community and the further benefits of that vitality will only stretch as far as the trail stretches. On behalf of the Mill River Greenway Initiative, I'd like to express my strong support for the proposed extension of the rail trail in Leeds, including the improvements to the historic Beaver Brook Arch Bridge and access to South Main Street in Haydenville. We welcome the interest and commitment to opening up access to and the preservation of these special places. Now, the entire Mill River, including this well-used but neglected stretch along the rail trail, has been the cultural, commercial, and natural backbone for our communities. The Bergy Flyer Rail Service ran through this corridor for 100 years, carrying people and goods up and down the river. We'd love to see this important linkage between our two towns restored. Thank you for your time and your thoughtful consideration. Thank you. <coughs> Larry Hott. Hi, my name is Larry Hott. I live at 65 Man Terrace in Florence. I'm here to speak on two issues. First, I am in favor of the override, and that's because I believe that we have to set our priorities, and our priorities, for, or my priority, is the next generation. That's the education of our children, 
and the safety of the community. Uh, I'm not somebody who just loves to pay taxes, but I think our taxes are in many ways a bargain. And we have a responsibility to our kids and we have responsibility to each other. I'm also here to speak in favor of the extension of the trail in Leeds. For 31 years I lived in Haydenville and for 18 of those years I worked hard to get a bike path in Williamsburg and Haydenville. And to get this part in is uh, the fulfillment of a dream. For all those 30 years, I probably walked on that trail four or five times a week. And every week I would notice that the trail would erode a little bit more, and parts of it were falling into the river. And it would be a real shame if we were to lose that trail. Now that I live in Florence, and the reason I moved to Florence is so that I could be near a bike path so I could commute as much as possible by bike. And I think if we are ever going to free ourselves from our addiction to the car and oil, we have to start with small steps. And one of those steps is to have more bike paths so everybody can get around, if they can, on a bicycle. Thank you. Thank you. Tony Patillo, please. Hello, Anthony Patillo, Florence. Uh, first, I want to start off by stating that since 1990, I voted for every override that the city has put forward. I am not going to vote for this next override if it comes on. We, in 2009, the override added an additional 200 bucks a, a year on top of our property taxes. This at two and a half million will add another $200. That's 400 plus dollars a year extra on top of your property taxes. For some people, that may not seem like a lot, but I've spoken to a lot of elderly people in our area, and for them, it's a month of heating fuel, it's a month of food, it's a month of electricity. We're facing stormwater management fee increase, fee. We're facing food costs that have increased. We're facing electrical costs that are going to be going up. Columbia Gas has announced that they're increasing their rates. This is a death by a thousand cuts and it's permanent. It's not for one year, it's not for two years, this goes on forever. There's got to be another way of doing this and it's tough decisions that have to be made. I'm really for education. My name is on a plaque up at the high school. I served five years on a building committee for that renovation. But the general good for a lot of citizens that are elderly, this is going to hurt and hurt bad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joel Dansky, please. Hi, uh, my name is Joel Dansky. I live at 29 Northern Avenue, uh, which is less than 500 feet from the uh, existing bike path uh, that goes from Bates uh, Street to Woodmont Road. Um, when we moved to this house in 1979, there was no rail trail network anywhere. Um, and now we feel like we're in the center of it. Um, I should also say that I am one of Northampton's two representatives to the Norwatic Rail Trail Advisory Committee, uh, which will be resurfaced, we hope, this starting this summer. And I would urge you to um, continue expanding the uh, bike paths in Northampton by uh, authorizing this purchase. It's an opportunity you should not miss. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Um, oh, I knew this was going to happen. Uh, Marion Ward? No, Marvin Ward. Sorry. Marvin Ward, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I live in Williamsburg, and I'll try to uh, support the two proposals, the extension of the trail beyond Grove Avenue and the acquisition of the easement down to South Main Street in Haydenville without repeating what has already been said. Um, in Williamsburg, the town has created a committee to examine a way to get a greenway between the two village centers of Haydenville and Williamsburg along the Mill River. So obviously there's also a possibility down the line to connect with what you would be building out to get to Williamsburg. Um, we in fact discussed and wrote a letter of support for this project hoping that, uh, with, in discussion with Wayne Fryden, hoping that such a letter of support would help in the acquisition of a grant to do the work. And, uh, Obviously, we're not focusing on that connection at this time. 
if it's a one year um, to just determine feasibility, we'll be having a public forum in about two weeks. Uh, it, this is indeed an opportunity not to be missed. Uh, if you trust what you read in the Gazette, the uh, comments about Williamsburg were extremely misleading. That when the town voted, it was more than a majority that voted in favor of the bike path, but they required a supermajority, and it fell two or three votes short of the supermajority. And that's where the failure occurred. So the paper led you to believe, or the reader to believe, that the majority of the people in town are opposed to this. Every time I mention what's happening both tonight and what our committee is doing, I hear, oh, we can't wait for this to happen. So please help us get along. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Julia Reisman. Good evening. I'm Julia from Northampton, and I'm in support of the rail trail development. One of the features um, of the new trail, if you proceed with it, is a 150-year-old stone bridge. That bridge was built without, uh, by hand without uh, trucks to bring those gigantuan rocks forward. Horses pulled them. It's part of our New England legacy to have these beautiful old bridges. Today, there's a huge uh, maple growing right in the middle of that bridge. Its roots are tearing the bro uh, uh, rocks apart. This would be a beautiful opportunity to save a piece of our cultural heritage. Um, along the way, on the walking paths, what the, the dirt is eroding into the river and degrading the river quality water. Um, there's so many good reasons for our environment, for our culture, for our heritage to go ahead and, and, and um, improve the trails. But even more important is what it does for our community health. For every person who chooses to leave their car at home and take the trails instead, um, uh, individual health is improved and our community health is improved. One of the uh, projects of um, the Friends of Northampton Trails and Greenways was to create a map. And we make the map free so that people can learn how to get access to the trail. The um, um, on-ramp, uh, the easement that you'll be buying, the on-ramp onto the trail will open up access to the trail to a whole region of uh, neighborhoods that currently won't, probably won't take their bicycle to places because it's too you know, out of the way to get onto the trail. Safe access to rail trails where people can bicycle without competing with cars really improves people's attitudes towards bicycling and using bicycling to get from here to there. So um, for, for a lot of good reasons, I really encourage you to support this project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jean LaFrance, please. Good evening, uh, respected members of the council, ladies and gentlemen. In a flagrant disregard of econ economics and fiscal responsibilities, this city's government is hell-bent on demanding another Proposition 2.5 override on taxing property owners for its income. This city's government is threatening to lay off 30 school teachers and police officers if it doesn't get its dictated and demanded $2.5 million Proposition override. Where was this city's government's concern for th these, those school teachers and police officer positions when it urinated away several million dollars to purchase tax generating property off Turkey Hill Road, Route 66, Spring Street, and Coles Meadow Road? Just weeks ago, flying in the face of alleged budget shortfall of $1.4 million, the city spent $484,000 to buy less than 80 acres of wilderness off Coles Meadow Road. That purchase alone represented 10 police and school teacher positions. This city is now demanding $2.5 million proposition override. This amount to be added to the city's property tax base forever while it enthusiastically has improved spending $250,000 to extend the bike path for less than a mile from Leeds to the Williamstown's line. This city government is crying poverty, yet it obviously has no qualms about sending $250,000 on a project, proposition, project rather, that it needs about as much as anyone in this room 
needs a terminal case of cancer. Within the past 21 years, since 1972, this city has called for seven overrides. Five of these overrides passed in 1994, 96, 98, 2009, and 2010. Each override represents an ever-increasing property tax burden on every property owner in this city. My property taxes have more than doubled in that 21-year time period. Yet this city's government has not learned to administrator, administrate an operating budget that is based on and should be dictated by known tax revenues. This city's government seems to be driven by the same socialistic entitlement ideology that drives our federal government at this point in time. This city wants and wishes for something without ever taking into consideration whether it has the tax revenue to cover the projecting cost. And the city demands and dictates that the property owners must cough up the money to pay for these entitlements. You do not operate a big business successfully based on any perceived entitlements and or wishful thinking. A successful business always operates within the restricted constraints of its known income. Okay. The Proposition 2.5 override issue is a classic <laughs> example of taxation without representation. Over 200 years ago, the people of this country fought a revolution with England over just such a principle. At that time and point, people won the war, but apparently they did not learn anything from that experience, for the principle taxation without representation is still being applied to every property owner in Northampton Mr. through LaFrance? every override I'm sorry, the city demands. I'm sorry to interrupt, but your three minutes have expired almost two minutes ago, and I appreciate, and, and I appreciate your sharing with us. Thank you very much. You are more than welcome. Thank you. Uh, next up, Valerie Vigneault. Yes. Well, it's French. I, Thanks. <laughs> I, took I live at 88 Front Street, right at the entrance, very close to the entrance of the rail trail at Grove Street. And I support the rail trail, but I support the rail trail as it is now. Um, I walk it four to five times a week from Leeds to Williamsburg. And I understand the manifest destiny of wanting to connect town to town with pavement. But this section of the trail is different. I don't know how many of you have been on that section. Um, the trail through Florence is largely a way to an end. And this is a destination as it is. Other sections of the rail trail are largely residential and sometimes commercial. This section is not. It's woodland. There's one house. Any Leeds kids that want to bike to school can already do so. There's a trailhead at Front Street. No Leeds kids would be coming from Williamsburg. Um, in Leeds in the summertime, we already have significant issues with summer swimmers on the street side of the Mill River. They park illegally. They leave a lot of garbage. And a more accessible and more public access point to the river, I think, is going to result in an increase in this kind of traffic. This is a gorgeous trail in its natural state that does already connect to Williamsburg. And I and many of my neighbors would like it to remain that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Heather Warner, please. Hi, my name is Heather Warner. I live at 115 Pine Street in Florence. Um, I've lived there for almost 20 years. And um, I live with my husband and twin boys. Um, we love to bike and hike and um, do all of the things in this community that, um, have, that are natural resources and man-made resources. Um, and I'm, I'm here tonight to speak out in favor of um, expanding the bike trail. Um, I also appreciate the natural beauty of the area. Um, and, but I also think that this is a rare opportunity and we need to take advantage of it. Um, so I'm asking you to support grants and seek grants to make this happen, um, as well as working with Williamsburg to um, you know, uh, access land that may need to be accessed in order to do it. Um, I also 
realize that um, our vital community, uh, you know, and, and also just with inflation and just the way things are in the economy, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to do things on a small budget. And um, a vital community requires human and financial resources. And for this reason, I also support the two and a half override to fund our city schools and infrastructure. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, MJ Adams. Hi, I'm MJ Adams. I live at 60 Norwood Avenue in Bay State section of town. I, I'm here tonight specifically to speak in support of your vote to, uh, for the override. Uh, being a product of this educational system here in town and having four daughters, two who have graduated and two are in the cusp of graduating next year, I really want to speak soundly about the importance of us investing deeply in our education. This is the one community asset that we pass forward to our kids. We have a beautiful city, we have a wonderful natural environment, but the education system that we give our kids during their K through 12 years is critical to serving them for the rest of their lives. And it's important to realize that that it is them that we will rely on down the line to make sure that the economy and everything grows as it needs to. So I'm asking very specifically that you support the override vote. Um, we are known for our educational system. We have children who go to college and who find that they are heads and shoulders above other kids at college because we have served them so well. And I think that that's an important thing. My kids are about to graduate next year, but I want to make sure that that wonderful legacy that we've been able to provide uh, continues for all who move to Northampton because we do have an extraordinary educational system and we need to continue <laughs> to invest in it strongly. So please support the override. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike Sullivan, please. Hi, I'm Mike Sullivan, uh, 25 Fort Street, and I'm here to uh, uh, support the uh, bike extension, the bike, uh, rail trail extension projects. Um, I recognize uh, what the uh, two, several speakers said ago about um, concern about increased traffic and um, uh, pollution, but I think that if you go on the existing rail trails, it's actually very clean. Um, uh, the first speaker, uh, Nick Horton, and his group run a volunteer cleanup of the trails. Um, I wonder when there is uh, pollution on a trail, if it's a bicyclist or perhaps if it's just happened to be, you know, uh, another user. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, the other, um, you know, there have been uh, a number of rail trail extensions over the years, and there's often been opposition, like, for example, uh, the Hadley segment between Amherst and uh, Hampton. But as time went on, I think people generally uh, changed their minds about it after seeing the benefits of the trail. So um, I, I have a feeling that this is a <coughs> example of that. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ruth Ever, please. Hi, my name is Ruth Ever. I live at 17 Chestnut Avenue in Leeds, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the override. Uh, I am a parent of an 8th grader and an 11th grader in the Northampton Public Schools. I'm also the co-chair of the Northampton High School PTO. And I can tell you that the looming budget cuts are going to truly be devastating to our schools. The schools have already been diminished by the cuts over the last probably 10 years. In fact, I believe we've been down so long that I think we've forgotten what having enough resources and truly meeting the needs of our students actually looks like anymore. It's a testament to the dedication of our teachers and staff that the education system continues to be as good as it is, but we can't afford to lose any more teachers or services. Maintaining strong public schools is probably the most critical element to the overall strength of our city, and the arts in particular are critical to the overall learning and success of all of our students. There needs to be a range of learning opportunities at schools so that all our students can succeed and graduate. Just as an example, the PTO, which is a completely voluntary organization, raises about $12,000 a year for all those essential extras that many of us take for granted now. Things like the poetry slam, having murals on the walls of the school, extra materials for science classes, art or cooking classes. But even if the PTO could, say, double or even triple how much we raise, you can see that it doesn't even come close to the million dollar shortfall that the city is facing. We have to make up that difference somehow. And as much as I don't want my taxes to go up, I can see that we simply need this override and we need to make up this gap so that our city and our schools can continue to thrive. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Linda Dell. Hi, I'm Linda Dell. I live at 10 Arlington Street, in Northampton. I agree with everything that Ruth just said. Um, I'm a long-term resident here of Northampton. I've been here for 20 years now. I'm here to support the override. I'm also here to support the, um, the extension of the rail trail. I actually didn't even realize that was happening tonight, but I'm really here to support the override. I love Northampton. We have a great arts community. We, we're a great community to retire to. We have great bike trails, and we're a great community to raise our kids in. And so, and if you're neither an artist, nor retired, nor, you're, nor a parent, nor a cyclist, we're still a great community. And I want to continue to attract businesses to our community and people who want to invest in Northampton. I believe the best way to do that is to ensure that our public schools and public safety are well funded or adequately funded. No cuts, that is, so they could always be better funded. Um, I believe it's a key selling point to Northampton that we have good public schools. And I want to ensure that we keep them that way. Um, I have a, a kid who's at Jackson Street School. I love Jackson Street School. I look forward to sending him to <laughs> JFK Middle School. I look forward to sending him to the high school here. So we need to ensure that we keep our public schools good. We need to keep the arts alive and funded. We need to keep physical education alive and funded. We need to keep special education supported. So I support the override. I, I, one last thing I want to say is that I understand that public education, it's for every child. And even if it's not for your child, it is for your community. So I plea with people to support the override. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Steve Harrell, please. Hello, my name is Steve Harrell, and I live at 474 Elm Street. Mm -hmm. I came to Northampton 32 years ago. I also own a business downtown. I have three short points. First, I urge the city council to vote tonight to put the override question on the ballot for the city voters for June 25th. Secondly, I urge the voters of Northampton to vote yes on the override. I can sum up my reasoning in six simple words. You get what you pay for. Voters sometimes think that government naturally should provide first-rate schools, excellent protection by police and firefighters. They want streets in good conditions, plowed timely in the winter, and beautiful parks and good libraries. But when you ask them to pay for these things, there is a disconnect. Governments don't provide these things just out of the sky. There must be sufficient revenue. The property of the average single-family homeowner in Northampton is valued at $297,000. This override will cost that homeowner an extra $4.52 a week, or 65 cents a day. That's a very affordable and very small price to pay for these things that we won't have if we don't pass this override. And of course, there are exemptions provided to those who really need them. Thirdly, on a somewhat different subject uh, regarding the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I'm going to read off a list of a few cities around the nation and then tell you why. Denver, Washington, Louisville, Baltimore, Detroit, Kansas City, Cleveland, St. Louis, Cincinnati, New York City, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia. What do these cities have in common? They all have a city income tax. This is usually only one or two percent, but they can have a city in income tax because the states they are in allow it. Massachusetts, sadly, is one state that does not, one of six states that does not allow cities and counties to have local income taxes without the consent of the state legislature. They don't want to provide that consent because they want to retain the control of public finances. Who would want to give up that control. However, this is unfair and the situation needs to be changed. In a city like Northampton, we don't need our city budget to be held hostage every year to Beacon Hill. Now this particular effort will be a long road and we should start. But for now, let's at least put this override on the ballot and pass it. Thank you. Thank you. Roy C. Martin.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. Uh, ladies and gentlemen the audience and at home. My name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Con Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, today I was going through a lot of my old papers. You know, I'm sitting down and starting to write a book. And I run across something that has to do with, basically, with the, this override. All right? This was something that happened in 1995. And it was over the raise for the mayor, which was only a few thousand dollars. But it goes like this. Dear voter, I am Roy C. Martin, formerly of Northampton, Mass. I was a contender in the 1995 mayoral race in Northampton, Mass. I have set myself up as an advocate for the poor, the homeless, the senior citizens, and my latest campaign has to do with the mayor herself, the office of mayor. As all the people know, the office of mayor is held by Mary Ford. See, that's how far back it goes. All right, okay, I'll, I'll skip a little bit there because uh, 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 as it goes, right, you know, I'll go down to something else. Now I feel that the people within the administration on layoffs and more layoffs in the works, good people out of work, union people losing their livelihood and whole jobs disappearing or being replaced by part-time workers at no benefits, all because there is no money in the budget. Now to have the money for a sizable raise of this kind, right, and that, that goes on to say about the raise. So. But anyways, uh, at that time, I was against her raise. And then after that, I fought against a few uh, overrides. Well, now I feel that I don't know why the people of the city of Northampton, right, and the city councilors here who are supposed to be knowledgeable people can't come up with other ways besides a Prop 2.5 override. And then once you get a Prop 2.5 override, you go hog wild with spending it. And you spend it as fast as you can without paying your bills. You don't pay up all the old bills. You just spend and spend and spend. All right? How, how feasible is that? And a lot of these senior citizens and older people, all right? Now, I have one more thing that I have to say here real quick. All right? I got 34 seconds. This comes from uh, uh, Stan Rosenberg, who was pro temp of the president pro temp of the Senate. Dear Mr. Martin, I would at March 5th, 2004, I would like to take this opportunity to respond to your question regarding the legality of a local sales tax. Municipal governments in the Commonwealth are prohibited from initiating a local sales tax. In order for a local government to impose a sales tax, it would need a change in the current law. A community could file a home rule petition requesting authority to implement such a tax in that community. This would then need to be passed by both the House and Senate and be signed by the governor or become law without his signature. Thank you for contacting me regarding this matter. Sincerely, Stan Rosenberg, President Pro Tem. Thank yes. All right. And uh, Thank you. anyways, as I said, right, there is other ways. Thank you, Roy. Uh, that citywide sales tax would have covered it from that time to now. We wouldn't have had to worry about. Thank you. Um, the we that's the end of the list. Uh, is there anyone else who wished to speak at this time? Yes, sir. David Corbett, Fort Hill Terrace. Life is good, but not for some people in the city. You know, we're talking about an override. I have two affordable units, people that are on assistance. One person died, his wife's gonna move out because she can't make the stairs. I will no longer give affordable housing. It'll be affordable for whoever can make the payments, the rent. I was gonna buy another house, a long-term tenant lives there, but I will not do it anymore. I refuse to. I can't keep up with your increases. This year, it's going to be a Proposition 2.5 override. Next year, it's a new enterprise fund, stormwater runoff, which we're going to have to supplement the music school, the Academy of Music, the Bay State uh, Preschool, whatever is down there in the school building. The next year, it's going to be a 
override for the Board of Public Works facility. That was 25 million last time I was here. Probably up to 30 or 35 now. The next year it'll be 40 million for the roads. Right now it was at 35. Which the last Board of Public Works director, before he retired, told you, don't accept any more streets. We cannot afford it. And here we go. That's on the agenda tonight. Then I figured a fifth year. By then, the state will smarten up and not give us any more money for the CPA. Then we're stuck with the bonds that you bonded out for 15 years or more. Millions of dollars. You know, I talk about the Academy of Music over there. They give a discount to the school in South Hadley so they can be here and use it. And we're going to pay the extras. We just paid more money for uh, the fire escapes over there. Damned if the people can use it with all the cars parked at the bottom all the time. Take a look at it. There should be fire zones over there. Instead, they got special parking lots where the people can't even leave the building if they want. Your clock's not running. Through. Yeah, I, I know. We're, we're, <laughs> I'm, I'm counting on your sensitivity to it. All right. You know, it, it's, it breaks my heart that I have to tell a person that they're going to probably have to leave the city because I won't take the house. I've been given affordable housing. My parents gave affordable housing. My grandmother did over on King Street where the old funeral home was. That's not going to happen anymore. I'm going to make sure that I can become a, long, or a lifelong resident and my wife can live here as long as she can. I've already warned my tenants. There's people that want to move in. I'm going to warn them also. Every time the taxes go up or the funds go up, the fees, their rent is going to go up. If they can't afford it, too damn bad. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. I, I bet you that was damn close to three minutes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I looked in the computer to the website for the city. Can, I'm sorry, can you identify yourself and your address? Uh, my please? name is Ms. Martinez, and I live on Elm Street, Thank in you. Northampton. And um, I went to the website for the city and read everything that was there. And um, I was surprised by the way that it was written that the mayor asked you for your vote to increase the property taxes by over $2 million. I don't remember the ending of how many thousands. And it says that that increase was going to be from 2013 to 2014. And then at the bottom of the paragraph, it says yes or no. But nowhere on that form that was put in the computer, it says that there was going to be an increase in taxes for three to five years. It only says that it's going to be for one year. I made some phone calls, and they told me that that was the form that was used for the first vote, uh, that there were some of you that were not here, but the other people were here, and they voted. And that was the one that was put in. And I just wanted to know how come the form says that your increase, the proposed increase of taxes, is going to be for the year 2013 to 2014, but very clearly, I've been here a couple of times and to other meetings, um, the mayor said that it was from three to five years. So is it one thing or is it the other thing? I would like someone to answer that for me. I, I'm sorry that we're not allowed to respond, but the mayor is sitting right there, and I bet he'd help you if you, have, if you ask him um, after, after the public session, if you could. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you already voted for one year and tonight you're going to vote the same form for another year, then when the ballot comes in, if it comes to a ballot, then it will be for one year, not for five years. Because that's what it says on the form. Unless there's another form. Did I go to the wrong website? Again, um, I'm sorry, according to the rules, I can't answer your question. No, I'm just, I just wanted to be clear because it's really important to have things very clear. If it's, it's any consolation, there is clarification for that that I think that, that the mayor's office can provide you with. 
But he's not on the website. And, and I can provide you with also after the meeting, but I don't know if you want to stick around till 11, but. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else would like to speak at this time? Marty. Just very briefly, I'd like to speak on behalf of both the over. Could, could you identify yourself? Sorry, Marty Nathan, uh, 24 Massasoit Street, uh, Ward 2. Um, I'd like to speak on behalf both of the override and the extension of the bike path. I was on the other end of the bike path, like Larry Hott, um, the proposed bike path, like Larry Hott, back several years ago when unfortunately it was defeated, and this would be a, a terrific. Uh, boon for both communities. Uh, but for the schools and the override, we must do it. We are stuck by a federal government that doesn't want to adequately fund our communities or our states and um, has been withdrawing those funds, leaving us high and dry. Um, but we still must take care of our kids, take care of our streets, and try not to squeeze the public, the common, uh, but to expand it so that everybody in our community can benefit by what we have here in Northampton. I hope you vote for it, for both issues, and thanks very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Hi, I'm Laura Sefta. I live at 35 Norwood in Florence. Um, I'm going to keep it really short because probably everybody knows what, what the two sides are about. Hopefully we're not two sides, we're one city. And we, uh, I just have to say, I'm not embarrassed to say that I can ill afford a raise in my taxes. I am not a rich person, I'm a single mother, but I refuse to live in a city that doesn't educate its children. That's going to be a very ugly place to live in a couple of years because if you go to towns <laughs> that neglect the schools, it's not a pretty picture. You're gonna pay on the other end with the jails, you're gonna pay on the other end with crime. It, it, it's just, it's not a workable, um, it's not a deal I'm willing to make. So I'm willing to find, I'll drink less cappuccino and I'll, <laughs> I don't know, I'll, 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 it's not that much more money and it feels to me like it's a, it's a, I can't really afford a raise in the taxes but I. I can't afford to live in a town that doesn't have services. So we'll have to vote for the override and try to find solutions to the structure so that we don't have to keep doing it. But for now, it seems to me like it's the only way forward. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Anyone else? Going once? Going twice? Thank you all. Uh, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll so we can convene the meeting. Thank you. Here. Present. Here. Here. Present. Here. 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 We do have a quorum. Everybody's here. <laughs> <clears throat> this is, um, we have a petition for coal and wire locations. This is a meeting of public hearing. Uh, National Grid requests permission to locate coal, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along, the way, um, uh, along and across the following public way, which is Meadow Street, install one SO pole to provide electric service for irrigation pump at the new soccer field beginning at a point approximately 890 degrees east of the center line, 890 uh, feet east of the center line at the intersection of Spring Street location, approximately as shown on plan attached. Um, is there anyone here to speak for the proponent? <laughs> yes, Let me is. guess. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Lisa Chesinski with National Grid. Is the dog still in my kitchen? I'm sorry. Is your dog still in my kitchen? I wondered where she was. <laughs> it took her a little while to come back. <laughs> I'm here on behalf of National Grid to request the permission for a pole placement on Meadow Street in Florence to provide power for the new athletic fields it's to run the pumps for the irrigation system. I've spoken with the DPW and the rec department, along with the, the general contractors out there. 
to come up with a, an agreed location. Uh, it's not process. We ask if it, yeah. for questions or now? Yes. Are yes. oh, there any opponents actually to this petition? Hmm. I accept a motion right now for we'll to close the public hearing. Second. The public hearing. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Uh, Move approval of the poll permit. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Um, and does this require a roll call? Do we know? No. no. Nope. Okay. So the voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, Lisa. Get Thank your you. dog out of Jean's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we are a small town. <laughs> the floor is very clean around my dog's dish right now. Um, approval minutes. Accept a motion. For oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We're, I, we're up to the communications of the mayor. I'm sorry. The mayor is here in attendance. As you all know, he's permanently recognized and and here. Do you want, you have proclamations? I have no communications other than to wish the council would. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Very kind of you to share that with us. We appreciate that. Um, this uh, the, uh, first resolution up is upon the recommendation on the Committee on Cultural and Recreation Services. Uh, this is a resolution. Whereas the city of Northampton wishes to pursue a state authorized cultural district through the enabling legislation by the Massachusetts State Legislature and Governor's Office. And by the way, I'm going to ask you if you want me to continue to read this because. Move waive reading. No. Okay. 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 There's a motion to waive reading, and everyone seems to be in accord. So I'll accept a motion to. Second reading. Second it. All right. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on this? There'll be a roll call vote for this. Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Barnes? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Yes. Okay. It is passed. What are we up to here? Ah, petition for street acceptance. <coughs> Okay, I'm sorry. We are at, we're at one minute announcements with the point that we can share uh, announcements relative to the awards or in general. Anyone have anything to say? Uh, Council Freeman Daniels. Uh, on Sunday, May 19th, the Northampton Historic Society uh, at 2 o'clock will be having its a Graham Cracker Festival and Art Contest. Um, Members of the community are welcome to uh, submit artwork that contains at least one graham cracker, uh, which will be <laughs> judged by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, I understand, a panel of judges. It will be, uh, I think you can get more information at the uh, Historic Northampton website, and it's uh, in celebration of Sylvester Graham and his, uh, his cracker for, uh, <laughs> for uh, um, abstinence. Yep. Yes. <laughs> we are a small town. That's my um, <laughs> um, uh, I have an announcement. The, the Office of Planning and Development has invited us to take a van tour on uh, Friday, May 10th. Counselors, did you get letters to that effect? Yes. yes. Um, this is relative to uh, on site edification so we can understand the visitation the sense of what's being described in the proposed uh, zoning amendments. Um, and it's a one-hour tour. Uh, starts at 1 o'clock, and it'd be great if any counselors can participate. Or inclined where, to and where do we meet for that? I'm sorry. Right in back of City Hall. So we'll meet back here in, behind City Hall. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, can you can contact the OPD if you have any questions. Sorry, I have the date once again. It's May 10th. Thank you. Friday. Counselor? Um, along that same vein, uh, we should probably remind folks that uh, May 13th, is that the date of the ordinance? Yes, a plan, oh, uh, planning board and ordinance committee joint public hearing on those said zoning uh, amendments, proposed amendments. So for uh, the general public who wish to provide input, that would be the appropriate first point. 7 p.m. 
also, um, also a, an environmental notification form for proposed maintenance dredging and bypass system of Paradise Pond at Smith College was received on April 30th and is on file in the City Council office. So get there early to beat the lines. Um, and that's it for my announcements. Uh, Council LaBarge? Yes. Um, I think there's a parade Saturday, the Pride yes, Parade. Yes, there is. Do you know what time that starts, Councilor? Noon. noon step off. Step off at noon down by the parking lot near the brewery okay. on Hampton. At noon time. So what time should we all be down there? Before noon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> I, I would I would show up around 11, 11.30 something. It's beginning there this time? Right. It starts so down there. Starts on there the and then fairground. walks to the Go fairground. To the fairground. Okay. Just, just so you know, um, <laughs> President Dwight's suggestion about when to show up is uh, notoriously bad. I, yeah. I, I can't <laughs> for that after the uh, St. Patrick's Day. Right. <laughs> so hey, you I'm still taking some heat for St. Patrick's Day. We uh -huh. were there many hours early and had many hot dogs. <laughs> there was no heat either. And there was no Big fun. <laughs> Thank you to the sheriff's department. Yes, yeah, thank the sheriff's department for lots of us. Um, okay, back to the business in hand. Uh, we have here before us a petition for street acceptance for Tyler Court that we're accepting. Can we move these as a group? Yeah, we can move these as a group. There's I would a motion to move, so them, move them as a group. Second act. And they're refer. So, refer them as a group, technically. And, and I assume the second upholds that referral? Second, Council LaBarge? Yes. Okay, Any discussion for referral? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Got the wrong agenda. Well, there we go. Well, you can announce them. This format. <laughs> this is why. I, this is why Mary's been scowling at me. Is I've got the wrong agenda. So, um, <laughs> to move the street acceptances licenses for secondhand dealers. Okay. Uh, there's a large group of licenses. <coughs> Applications here. Take them as a group. Take them as a group. All right. For referral. Mm -hmm. I think they're I mean, for voted on. That's not for referral. So, so moved. Any discussion on any of these applicants? I don't think we had a second. Second. I, I did. Council of Bars. Thank you. Well, I do have a question with regards to there's a couple of them that there are unpaid taxes, but they say not the owner of the business. I'd be interested in exactly what's going on with those two okay, okay. oh okay so they're okay tenants right i i called wendy myself on that mm -hmm. and she told me it has nothing to do with the business owners it's the person who owns the building they're paying their taxes so it's not these people that have the business it's counselor. It's the tenant in it's the, the ten yeah. Oh. Exactly, it's Thank the owner. I believe all their permit fees and everything and license fees have been paid. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. I wonder if there are um, <coughs> applicants here who, who wish to speak. Are there any applicants here who wish to speak to this, to their applications? You're very shy. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Move You're not one of the ones that hasn't <laughs> moved the question. <laughs> Who's that? Did you raise your hand? Uh, I don't need to do that. Oh. Okay. okay. And, what, and what do you represent? Which app? You're a funky cab? Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving these applications? Aye. 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 Opposed? And now the, we also have the, well, that was, <laughs> do we take them all as a group all the way down for the secondhand dealers, junk dealers? I don't think so. Okay. Now we're up to licenses for uh, junk dealers. Move those as a group. Second. Just two of them. Okay. Any discussion on these? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Next up is licenses for trucks and taxi. I'll move those as a group. Second. Any discussion relative to these? I will have to abstain on the Bill Willard. Uh, okay. So acknowledge. So actually, why don't we separate that out? So uh, first, we'll move for license and truck, and ta uh, licenses for truck and taxi for uh, Bill Willard Incorporated at 1010 Ryan Road in Florence. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And an abstention from Councilor Tacey. And now we can move the remainder as a group. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now weekend and Sunday bowling licenses. So Temple moved. And Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. This is um, this is the Board of Public Works right here. This is the uh, recommendation to disapprove street acceptance for Bradford Street. We'll move that on that first. Accept the motion to put it on the floor. Both. Accept the motion. Second. Oh. Um, is there any discussion? Councilor yeah, Daniels? Um, I'm a little unclear uh, uh, about the process here. Um, this has been referred to the Board of Public Works and to the Planning Board, I believe. So it's coming back to the council and we are now voting to disapprove that's the the, the motion is to not accept right. the petition I can, I can read the language actually please okay and <clears throat> this is a report and recommendation on the board of public work of the board of public works of the city council for bradford street south on february 7 2013 the northampton city council referred a petition to the northampton board of public works and the Northampton Planning Board a petition for the acceptance of Bradford Street South as a public way. Bradford Street South has two numbered houses on this way, 40 Bradford Street and 46 Bradford Street. The Board of Public Works held a public hearing at Bradford Street on March 2nd, 2013 at its regular BPW meeting on March 13th, 2013 after considering the petition, voting unanimously to not recommend approval of the street acceptance as this private way does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted public way. And this is respectfully submitted the Board of Public Works of the City of Northampton. Ed Hunt. And there's, yeah, and the, the attached there is a memo from the Planning Board here. And you'll see a list for no recommendations for approval for a series of streets, Lawn Avenue, Massasoit Ave. Park Ave, Edgewood Terrace, Meadow Ave, Bright Ave, Warner Row, Center Court, Pine Valley, and Bradford Street, North Anson. Thank you. Uh, uh, I understand the policy position here. Um, I'm just, I, I don't have, it without a map, I don't know where Bradford Street South exactly starts and ends. Um, I, I would just feel comfortable if, if this is, too, I think this is a single reading because it's a disapproval. Right. I think I'd feel comfortable seeing what part is not being approved and what part is uh, before, before the vote. Sir? It, it, right, there is uh, the rest of Bradford, with the exception of these two houses on the south end extension, there is no recommendation up or down on that. So, uh, I am addressing, if I yeah. could, because um, three of us, Councillor Tacey and Councillor <coughs> Adams, have been on the DPW committee, and for many years we've been in the process discussing what to do with street acceptance or not. Um, and I'm fine waiting a week so that a map is also there. But just so everybody understands, in place is a process with criteria um, for what streets we're going to move forward with acceptance and which weren't. And these are not taken lightly. Um, and I think the, the board has actually kind of stretched this so that they've, they understand the sensitivity of this, that many of these streets, mo all of these streets, have been under the assumption that they were city streets, right? And that they have received city services. And then we've discovered through the years that 
through some, sometimes just through bureaucratic error on some streets we're looking at, that in fact they were never approved for city streets. So there's a wide range here of, uh, I forget, Councilor Tacey, I think, has the number, but what are we talking about, like 70 streets, something like that? 70. That we've been looking at and the DPW have been going through and looking at criteria. Some of these streets are fairly um, simple in terms of approval and I think make logical sense for approval. Some are lo very logical about not approving. They're basically somebody's driveway and we tend not to be plowing people's driveways. They tend to be a quarter mile driveway for someone and they're fairly easy to do. And then some of them are in the kind of middle ground and for those there, have, there are public sessions being held. And just so you understand the process here, but I wouldn't disagree, I think it would be helpful if you need to see a map on this, but I'm not sure it's the mapping exactly of where the street is. I think what might be helpful to see, what are the list of the criteria and how might those particular streets either fit or not fit that criteria, regardless of where the street is. So I'm not sure if that <coughs> would be helpful, but we could ask for that in the future. Councilor Tixi. <coughs> One, what did I just add to what Councilor Spector said? Was my colleague on the, me along with Jesse Adams, uh, there's a lot of legality in it, and there's, there's engineering that has not been done. There's no boundaries. There's no points of acceptance. There's no, and for the DPW, they would have to expend enormous amounts of money in engineering and design for streets and stuff before they could accept them. So, um, it, and without putting anybody under the spotlight here, because the research is still going on on these, um, if the Board of Public Works has recommended not to accept this particular part of the street, a map would be helpful. A map would have been, I thought it might have been attached with this. I was looking for it. Um, is there a way, can we put this off till the next meeting? Yep, uh, what's the, uh, to ask the council's pleasure, um, Councilor Freeman Daniels? I just want to clarify, um, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with the policy conclusion here. Uh, but this is, I think this is the first street, and the next one is Center Court. I, yeah. I think these are the first ones that we're, that the council's not approving or not accepting this, at least this term. And so I, I would like, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but I also expect that, uh, you know, uh, my constituents and other, and other residents in the city, if it turns out that they have to, you know, spend their own funds on plowing they'd like to know where they have to where they have to start and where they have to finish I, I think it's not unreasonable to at least have a rough map uh, and, and actually Bradford Street the southern portion probably is a pretty easy one because you can just kind of draw a straight line and then everything to the to the uh, east of it is fine but but I, I really would prefer a, a map with with all of these uh, Council Murphy and it, it would be nice for the first ones to have somebody from DPW here because this isn't just plowing. This is infrastructure in the street. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if there's a problem with the water sewer line there and it's not a city street, one of those homeowners could have to make, have some serious costs maintaining the underground facilities out to where the public way is. So this is more complicated than just snow plowing, even though that's the thing that started the discussion. Um, who, who then maintains what's in the street? Mm -hmm. I would move to table this until the uh, next meeting. Is it your pleasure Second. to table both Post of these disapprovals? Table the whole bunch of uh, let, let, let me ask the council if there if we have two disapprovals before us. Would you? Is it your intent or pleasure to have uh, someone from the DPW come yes. explain this? Yes. I, I think it's reasonable to expect exactly what you're asking for, given the fact that we are the decision actually bears a fair amount of weight and consequences and it would be appropriate to understand the lay of the land and the impact and the circumstances I think it's appropriate so uh councilor adamson I'll, councilor I'll move to postpone to the may 16th meeting second, second. request for disapproval mm -hmm. any discussion on that point yeah. I, I just want to be clear that I, the disapprovals and the approvals i'd like to have have addressed i think both. that's a good point yes, yes. I think that's a good point thank you yeah uh, so the motion is to table till the next meeting uh, and a request to be forwarded to postpone I'm sorry postpone uh, and a request to the DPW to send a representative to um, explain for us for both yeah all those in favor aye, aye. aye. I'm going to abstain if it's for both okay and an abstention 
from uh, Councilman. Um. Yes. Okay, so accept the motion for the approval of minutes from the last meeting. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. And now the reports of the committees. Uh, moved as a group. They're moved as a group. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And now we hand the gavel over to uh, Council Murphy to convene. We're recessing and we're convening in finance. And we got some. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, uh, it's a roll call, yeah. Yes. Yes. Present. Here. So the first order is with regards to accept the grant for the Leeds Rail Trail Extension. Whereas the Open Space Recreation and Multi-Use Trail Plan 2011 to 2018 recommends extending the city's rail trail network and generally rehabilitating it as needed and the city under the care and custody of the Conservation Commission and subject to Mass General Law Section 48C owns land necessary to extend the rail trail from its northern terminus in Leeds to one of the most spectacular riverfront locations in the city and whereas the city has already substantially completed the design of extending the rail trail, rehabilitating the one existing structure necessary for the rail trail, Beaverbrook Bridge, for the project for a total of $500,000, and whereas the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursable grants to cities and towns to support the rehabilitation and expansion of trails through the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which allows for 50% reimbursement, and therefore now be it ordered that the mayor it is hereby authorized to file and accept grants from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs and that the mayor be and is hereby authorized to take such other actions as are necessary to carry out terms, purposes, and conditions of this grant to be administered by the Planning and Sustainability Office on behalf of the Conservation Commission and the City Council appropriates and authorizes the City Treasurer with the approval of the Mayor to borrow the 500000 over 15 years under Mass General Law 44B. Uh, or any other enabling authority for the purpose of improving of the improvement of public multi-use trails and that this order shall take effect upon passage move to recommend second it second all right um, um move do to we want to wayne fight nice mr fight recognize all in favor aye aye so I talked about this at your last meeting, so I'll just be brief, but this basically would let us extend the rail trail about a third of a mile, a little over a third of a mile in Leeds. Um, it lets us, there's a small drainage problem in the existing rail trail, but will let us fix that, let us uh, rehab the Beaverbrook Bridge, and then go out to the most, both the most dramatic spot above the river, but also, as you heard from some speakers earlier today, the narrow section of the trail with some risk of the trail eroding away. This is a competitive grant, so we're asking permission to apply for it. No guarantee we'll get it. Mm -hmm. um, you know we do this every year. We ask for approval to borrow. We don't ever use that authority. And once a year, Susan comes before you and asks you to rescind it. But it makes us mm -hmm. much more competitive for the grant. Councilor Dwight? Uh, a couple of things. First of all, I think uh, you know this, this came up during public comment, and, and we have a difficult time sometimes trying to uh, explain what is perceived by some as um, these extravagant purchases. As I, I think I'm sum, surmising the uh, the disposition of that of that criticism, and you know it, you know the investment that we're talking about here. Uh, people say that could pay for any number of teachers, and firefighters, and, and and police officers, and I think it's important. You know, it's less a question, but I think it's more. Of, I think it's rather important to point out this is a grant, and this is not money that we're actually spending. These these large amounts we're not spending. And in fact, actually, we go through this tea ceremony of authorizing a loan that we've never, <laughs> we're never going to apply for, 
because but the but the uh, granting authorities require that we at least make a, express a commitment by committing to taking out that loan. The point, in fact, is as you say, you come back. Susan comes back to us later, and then we dispense with the loan in in itself. The other question that comes up about this is, and I, 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 some of the advocacy I heard was sort of describing this this new breakthrough in the the Haydenville. Uh, connector basically the point in fact that 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 terminus point that access to uh, route 9 and the, and the rest of the rail trail throughout Williamsburg and Haydenville is not what we're voting on here. Right. we're just we're voting to extend that spur that goes along the river that is currently now not covered with crushed stone and uh, not Fixed up as a bike path, but there still is there is an impediment at the at the end, right? That's absolutely correct. It is true that knowing where we're going to be in five years from now is important because you know if this was just a dead end, would be dead end forever. We might design it one way. If it's a trail that will eventually break through, we want to know that for the design details. But, but you're right. At this point, we're not not going through. Other councilor Tacy, and to be perfectly clear. The authoriza authorization of this in no way means that the city will borrow a nickel, not one penny. I just have to, and this is a federal grant that goes to the state for administration. This is not state money or this is federal money that goes to the state for administration. And I think some of the uh, confusion too with this is a lot of what people perceive as grant money, which I sympathize with some that uh, I think that we should look at grant money as rather than have it as grant money as have it as local aid from the state or federal government. But anyway, that could be neither here nor there. But I wanted that not a nickel will be borrowed by the city for this. Period. That's correct. Yes, no one. It's federal money that goes to the state. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, can I, can I just, as a matter of process, we're voting to authorize borrowing, but the finance committee would have to uh, actually approve a, a, bar, a bond issue, if I'm not mistaken, right? They'd have to do a, a, a second approval of the actual uh, issuance. I defer to the mayor, Susan, on that. All right, thank you. Uh, that's all right. That's well, let me read a portion of it that the mayor be and is hereby now authorized to take other actions uh, as are necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of this grant. And the city council appropriates and authorizes the city treasurer with the mayor's approval to borrow the funds. Uh, so the approval would kind of be there, and then we'd rescind it. I mean, I think the the intent, like many of the other ones, is we have to approve it to show our good faith, but that we have no intention of actually doing it and would, in fact, um, remove that approval when the grants come in. And we, we've done that numerous times. We do this probably once or twice a year yeah. for 20 years now. Uh, Councillor Tacey? And in that <clears throat> once or twice a year is for 20 years now, never has the money been borrowed. Mm -hmm. Councilor Dwight? I, I, I think that Councilor Freeman Daniel's point, though, uh, adherence to the law just to, to cross all the T's and dot the I's, and, and I don't. Uh, there is a process whereby the council, um, the actual bond notes come forward. That would and, go to the finance committee signs them, but it's not that that's a. Um, I mean, the bonds have already been like issued at that point, so it's not like this. That, Think that that's an up or down sort of process. We're just signing it like a, a contract that's been authorized. So I do think bond notes do come back, but I don't think it's a um, an up or down kind of a voting kind of a process. Yeah, um, but if but this authorization to be acted on. I, I, I rescind my question. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, a, it's a good, it's an interesting yeah. academic yeah. question, but it's. Mm -hmm. um, other questions for Mr. Feiden or more discussion? Uh, you would like mayor. two readings on this, I would assume. I, I would, yes. We were before you two In weeks ago. So, right. mm -hmm. so 
Another question? Just for the mayor. Is the blue and gold, is that representative of something that's happening on the agenda tonight? <laughs> so, with uh, not hearing any more questions or any more discussion um, in finance, uh, all those who would positively recommend say aye. 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 Opposed? So now it actually uh, just, this was sponsored by Mayor Narkowitz, Councillor Tacey, Councillor Pamela Swartz, Planning and Sustainability, and now truly the Finance Committee. So we'll switch this back. Thank you, sir. And these are some appropriations upon the recommendation of Mayor Narkowitz that $238,877.64 be appropriated from the FY13 general fund on designated fund balances, which is also known as free cash, to the following accounts. Uh, legal OM for legal services, $85,000. Legal o OM judgments, the fire steps settlements that the mayor, I'm sure, is going to tell us about for $10,869.64. Judgments for $5,000 veterans benefits that we do we do this one regularly for $126,000 police fire accident insurance for $12,008 for that total of $238,877.64 and uh, move to recommend second second, second. okay and I'm sure the mayor is now going to tell us about this uh, well, there's a memo um, that uh, the finance director prepared uh, that outlines some of these. Um, can walk through and answer any questions. Uh, legal services, obviously, that's one that uh, we um, have been trying to uh, to get uh, to raise every year to get to historic levels. We'll be actually raising uh, the budget for that um, for FY14. But we're we are in a position where we do have to seek some transfers to. Uh, to pay for some of the ongoing legal expenses, of which we've had several this year, collective bargaining, um, uh, JLMC, and then I think another interesting one that uh, is the fact that we've had a lot of charter-related um, work uh, this uh, during this year. Uh, there was quite a bit of work uh, being done when the legislation was going through, and uh, there were multiple amendments that had to be worked on with the legislature, as well as the work that's being done with the council, uh, reviewing ordinances, et cetera. So there's been sort of an intensification there. So, but uh, we're we're uh, we believe this will help us get through to the end of the fiscal year. Uh, legal judgments. Um, you uh, may recall that uh, I came to you in January seeking a. Um, seeking a transfer of $45,000 from free cash into the legal judgments account. Um, uh, we also discussed uh, in executive session uh, that I was seeking that funding uh, to uh, because we had reached a settlement in a lawsuit. Uh, this was the case of Michael Hatch et al. Uh, versus the city of Northampton. Uh, this was a case involving um, a uh, wage act suit that was uh, 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 raised against uh, the city uh, back in February of 2012 um, uh, regarding the non-payment of steps uh, as it related to um, the budget process uh, for FY12. Uh, this was under the previous administration. There had been impact bargaining on the issue of steps. Um, uh, all of the uh, uh, bargaining units that had open contracts at that point uh, did accept the freeze of steps. Uh, um, there's a dispute about whether uh, 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 firefighters uh, were part of that, and they've sued. They sued under the Wage Act. Uh, we made the decision um, to settle this suit uh, because we were concerned about the liability of not only paying for the steps, but the triple damages, uh, the legal fees, and interest uh, that would be mandatory if uh, we were to lose uh, such a suit. Uh, so we made the decision to settle. And so the settlement, that uh, the, the funds that are part of this, and we, when we asked you for 45 in January, that was an estimate. Uh, it, there was then uh, uh, additional talks, and the actual judgment was filed with the court on April 4th. Um, then we actually went in and did the real-time retroactive adjustments to all of those employees pay back to July 1st and so uh, with that longer end date the amount rose so the actual amount 
to retroactively restore those employees back to July 1st uh, is the 55869-64, uh, which is why we need to um, need to have some additional funds. Uh, the 10869 uh, also moved in to raise that initial 45 that you transferred. Um, there's also a uh, transfer to the claims line item. Again, we uh, have a certain amount budgeted every year, but we've paid out uh, more claims uh, uh, than we had budgeted, so we will need to have an additional $5,000 to be able to, to, to satisfy that line item. Uh, workers' comp, uh, the workers' comp one was essentially we budgeted for a uh, police and fire accident policy. Uh, the actual policy renewal came in a little bit higher, so this trues up that budget. Um, veterans' budget, uh, I think this is one that we're all quite familiar with. Mr. Connor is here. If there's any question, specific questions you have, again, this is one of those traditionally uh, challenging accounts to try to, to fund accurately. And as you'll find when we submit our FY14 budget, we'll be making another attempt to raise the, the level of that budget to, to cut down on the need for these kinds of transfers. So uh, that's sort of the that's sort of the total of the um, of all the items that we're seeking your approval uh, to transfer from free cash into those other line items. Does uh, the veterans one is one we do all the time? Do you still want to hear from? Yes, I would. I would like to make. Okay. To recognize Steve Connor. All in favor? Aye. Good evening. Um, yes. We are in need of that additional money to get us through the fiscal year. We have um, a pretty good track record again this year of getting our 75% back. And new to this year is the amounts that are on two different budget line items that my office uses. And for those line items, we are getting 100% back. So although there's been more expended this year, um, than previous years or you know that the thing builds um, this coming um, year as we get it back on each quarter there'll be an additional 25% uh, for certain folks that we have helped get from homelessness into their apartments for the first time and for some people many many years the state of Massachusetts uh, I've been advocating and as state president finally got through uh, this past fiscal year that we will get 100% back for those folks that are um, either at Soldier On or the Cherry, St Cherry Street program down uh, that the VA runs. So those two budget lines for those folks when they need to get rehoused, um, the funds that we expend, we get 100% of that back. Mm -hmm. so, um, so although there's been more expended this year, more is going to be coming back, which is good news. Questions or discussion? Okay. So do I? Um, Steve, um, because you did your job so well that your uh, census actually expanded and you, your outreach was very successful. And uh, you have described in, in SSVA uh, subcommittee meetings that you believe that you've now topped out essentially that that this is not something that's going to be growing you now have a, essentially a predictable amount that will uh, facilitate Susan Wright's projections so that the likelihood of you coming to appeal for our overruns is probably going to be diminished I expect. right right and and it is predictable I think we've we've done the outreach I don't foresee it really changing as far as our numbers we've stabilized the one thing that has changed was really trying to assist in a statewide effort as well as a federal effort through the VA of assisting homeless veterans. But again, if we expend that money, we're getting all of it back. So that's the one point where there's growth. As far as our citizens that um, live in our neighborhoods that we assist, I think we've found most of them. Um, and that should probably be a stable number for the ongoing future for the short term. The, the other thing that as dealing with a lot of um, committees and work statewide, it's probably important to tell people that 
currently there's, and I'm not going to remember the number correctly, I think it's 340 or 360,000 veterans in the state of Massachusetts. In 15 years, unless we reinstitute the draft or really come up with major warfare where we're really pushing for more enlistment, in 15 years, that number is going to drop down to 172,000 veterans in the state of Massachusetts. That's the prediction that the VA has done for every state. With that understood, this is our crunch time. This is our biggest opportunity to help as many veterans and their dependents as we can. Going down the road, um, although the numbers are going to decrease because the medicine of uh, our armed forces has improved greatly, the people who have returned home may have never made it off of the front line. So it's hard for me to say that necessarily the money is going to go down of who we assist, and maybe not even the amount of people because the need is still out there because we're bringing people off the line. But um, I just don't see it ever expanding after we did that initial outreach of many years. I think um, we found the people that we intended to help, and I could be wrong, but I really believe that we've done a good job and it shouldn't increase. Any other, uh, Councilor Barge? I want to thank you and thank your team for doing such a great job also with housing partnership you're all combining together helping each other out and it's showing exactly what you're doing for our veterans coming home and who need the help and also to have a home to live and I think you had mentioned something to the effect Steve about the VA hospital with soldiers on about was that 47 apartments that are going to be built right they are building apartments up on Bear Hill um, the VA has approved um, land to go to soldier on who then in turn got grants to build housing if they they did a fantastic job out in Pittsfield Mass where they built it's always confusing how to word it but whether it's limited equity or something, there's an investment for these formerly homeless veterans to invest in these properties that they feel some type of ownership for. That existed out in Pittsfield, the Mansfield uh, apartments. They're, they're great. They run some people in there are on HUD VASH vouchers. Others have enough in their retirement or their disability that they're able to afford to live there. And it's veterans taking care of other veterans there. In all the years that I've done this work, working with veterans, there are some who get a chance to move into apartments, whether it's public housing or into an apartment, whether it's in Northampton or anywhere else. They seem to do fine on their own, and they just needed that hand up, especially those with families. But there are some veterans, especially the chronically homeless, that it's been a long time they need to be around other veterans for that self-support so that they can be identified that you know i know what you're going through you're hitting that rough patch i did last year my first year being housed that kind of thing so soldier on's done a very good job of creating that kind of environment so that these veterans can support each other to be permanently housed i just as in the regular world we talk about the the expense of having vet, uh, having individuals who are homeless using our emergency rooms and all of the other systems and how expensive it is. The same thing goes for veterans. It's, it's hard. I know I try to explain it to people, but they don't understand. You are spending more money by putting somebody in a shelter, whether it's Soldier On, Veterans Inc., you know, the New England shelter in Boston. It costs more money to do that than to help them get into an apartment with some financial assistance and they just we bring the services to them so soldier on is really working hard to push the envelope to say you know we it, it really is time to do housing first for everybody but especially for our veterans because i know that during the the 70s as i grew up and i worked in different fields 
the idea that we closed Northampton State Hospital, we closed Belchertown State School, those institutions were closed, and we created a homeless problem because we didn't make sure. It just doesn't make sense that another institution would be the Department of Defense, that people would come home and they'd end up homeless. Uh, that, that shouldn't be, and our office is working very hard to make sure, and thanks to uh, this city and all the wonderful citizens, we're really making an effort to change that and change the end um, for a lot of these people. Thank you, Steve. Uh, uh, we missed an announcement earlier, so we'll continue the veteran commercial. And we that's a good one. Okay. The, just so folks know, and thanks for giving me the moment, um, as many of you know, I have a district. It's not just the city of Northampton. We are centered here, but this is not our only um, location. We have 10 towns. So coming up, not this weekend, but May 10th and 11th, on a Friday and a Saturday, we are having what we're calling the Small Town Veterans Expo. It is an opportunity for veterans who are 80 or 18, well, not many of them are 18, but you know, 20-year-old, 22-year-old veterans who are returning home to find out all the programs that are out there. Massachusetts really has the right to be very proud. We have the best benefit program of any state in the union, and that's why we can address homelessness, and we can ad and address veterans justice and giving them opportunities. But it doesn't do any good if we don't know about them. We've done the outreach in Northampton and in all of our other towns, we're trying. But it's not always easy to get people in small rural communities out to learn all this. So we're having this expo. It's at the Cummington Fairgrounds next weekend, May 10th and 11th. Um, and actually the Saturday, the 11th, we are planning a, um, oh, there's my poster. It's not that the camera needs to see it. Uh, we're also on that Saturday morning, we are having a welcome home convoy that is basically military vehicles that we're getting from barns and different places Westover, plus some antique vehicles and police and fire departments and the sheriff's department, because we all know that a lot of returning veterans, they went right back into public safety. They keep serving, mm -hmm. and they're serving in our fire departments. They're serving in our police departments. So we've reached out to our 10 towns. They're going to have vehicles, and on all of these vehicles are going to be veterans who served in Iraq or Afghanistan and for, unfortunately, many of them, both places, and more than once. We want to put them on the vehicles. We're just going to drive slowly from Pelham right into the center of Amherst, hook up onto Route 9, and come all the way through, all the way to the Cummington Fairgrounds. It's going to pay, take about two hours. And we're reaching out to the business communities and citizens to say, you know, if, if, if it's a nice day on Saturday morning, put out a chair. Just say thank you. Just say welcome home. Put out a flag, hand make a sign, do whatever you want, and we're reaching out to every community and every business and citizens all the way up through the route. So uh, I'm looking forward to a very uh, great day, a great weekend. Steve, what time is that on Friday at the Cummington Fairgrounds? Um, the, the expo goes on from noon to dusk, and actually on the Friday, we end the evening with a live country and western band, and I don't want to mess up her name. It's the Lindsay LaSalle Band, I want to say. I should know that off of the top of my head. I've been talking about it. It's not on the poster. I should have put it on the poster. So um, it's 12 o'clock on Friday. I just want to make sure right. that... And the same on Saturday. After the, uh, after the parade of vehicles goes up, it also starts at noon, and we're going to have a short um, period where, for those who didn't know it, May is Military Appreciation Month. And so there's a lot of things going on, but we're going to have a ceremony up there um, about that. And it'll be brief, but everyone's welcome to come. Thank you. Any, oh, Councilor Tacey. So you're the president. You got 100% rather than 75%, and you didn't put the name on the poster. All right, Steve. <laughs> I, I had a lot on my mind. I was in Falmouth yesterday. He's been busy. So, uh, Councilor Tacey, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I had a question, a couple for the mayor. Um, on the, the, this is the the step increase. This is, was in 2012 on the firefighters union. Uh, this was the FY12 budget. That's FY12 budget. <laughs> and 
there's eight bargaining units in the city, or is there? Um, well, I, I guess my question would be counting schools for and, and all were on board and they agreed to forego the step increases with the exception. Uh, the all of the units that had uh, open contracts for FY 12, meaning that they we were in an active negotiation. Um, uh, that is correct. The ones that had open contracts uh, agreed to the step freeze. This is the, what uh, Mayor Higgins had proposed in order to close the gap for the FY12 budget, um, with the exception of uh, of that particular unit, Local 108. So, but they also there were there was a there was a couple of bargaining units that had closed FY12 contracts. We weren't in negotiation with them. Yeah. Um, so, but this bargaining at this particular one was in open negotiation. That is correct. And they're the only ones that sued us. Uh, that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, well, just as a point of fact, we also have a contract in FY11, uh, 12, and 13. And all four went? With that particular unit, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilor Freeman Dana? Yes, uh, I've got a question actually about the of legal services versus legal judgments line items. Mm -hmm. um, so, legal judgments, that's. That's used to settle claims, claims claim, and, and and lawsuits and, law, and, yeah. and all right, so exactly. claims and suits and legal services is is not used for that. Is that that's right? Or can legal services legal also services be legal services is for the um, uh, is for all of the things including the city solicitor, labor counsel, any other outside legal um, help that we have to hire. But, but is not at all used to settle suit lawsuits. That's correct. Yeah. Or judgments. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if the council wants greater transparency relating to settling suits and claims, then it can, it could underfund. The legal judgments line item, and then you'd can, you'd have for, as lawsuits arose that you'd want to settle, you'd come before the council and explain the that's the suit and the and, yeah. And, and Although you also have to understand some of those claims are things like um, the cl things that the claims committee right. Works on. I, I understand that yes the okay. potholes and and things like that that the claims committee saw. What's that? We only funded at five. Uh, she was just pointing out that we only funded at five thousand. But the claims, the claims Sorry, line, but, but not the legal judgments. We put more into the legal judgments, right? Legal judgments is the same thing. Yeah. Well, claims and judgments. Claims and legal judgments come out of the same account. Yeah. The parentheses are just to clarify. One was for the fire step settlement, and one was for claims. And most of the claims are the mailbox right. kind of things. Yeah. Can I? Can I? So I just, I just maybe I didn't get the beginning of the, the the sentence that said we started the fiscal year with 5150 in legal judgments line item. That means that that's what the city funded. That's what the council that's what the in the mayor's budget it was 5150 for for legal judgment. We budgeted 5,000 and we encumbered 150 from the prior year. Okay, so really that's that's what we funded in the in this past year. Okay. Any other questions on this one? So in our role as finance and concert promoters, all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Oh, great. So the next is upon the recommendation of Mayor Narkowitz, ordered that $55,869.64 be transferred from legal judgments to fire salaries permanent for the settlement with regards to Mr. Hatch and others in Latin. Uh, <laughs> Move to recommend. Second. All right. Uh, any discussion on this one? On this one? Mr. Mayor? Uh, uh, this is essentially um, the because the um, fire, obviously this would be for payments from FY12 and that budget has already long left the station. Uh, we want to make sure that, that the we need to move that money from judgments into the fire department budget to be paid out of that so that it keeps those budget line items accurate, accurately portraying what's being paid out in salary. Um, so we are infusing the fire department budget in order to pay those retroactive uh, right. steps. So just for everyone, this is the same item we just dealt with. This we're is just, just now the official movement. Got it up to the 55 and now, now we're moving we're it into the PNS account for the fire department. Councilor Tacey? Yeah, I would just like to say that um, 
and I've said this before, my father was president of the local 108 for more years than I can remember. I used to ask him, I asked him what the, uh, what the union was all about when I was a kid, and he told me, he said, well, he says, you have to look out for your guys. <laughs> he says, because your guys have needs. But he also said, you have to be very wary too, he says, because the city also has needs. So anyway, thank you. Any other discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. is an authority to file on the recommendation of Mayor David Narkowitz, where the City of Northampton, through investigation, has determined that the work activity consisting of the construction of the water filtration plant is both in the public interest and necessary to protect the public health, and that to undertake this activity is necessary to apply for, it is necessary to apply for assistance, and whereas the Department of Environmental Protection and the Massachusetts Water Pollution Abatement Trust of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts pursuant to Chapter 21 and Chapter 29C of the General Laws of the Commonwealth are authorized to make loans to municipalities for the purpose of funding, planning, construction activities relative to water pollution abatement projects. And whereas the applicant has examined the provisions of the Act, Chapter 21 and Chapter 29C, and believes it to be in the public interest to file loan application, now therefore it be resolved by the City of Northampton as follows, that Mayor David Narkowitz is hereby authorized on behalf of the applicant, being the City of Northampton, to file applications and execute agreements for grants and or loan assistance, as well as furnishing such information, data, and documents pertaining to the applicant for the grant and or loans, as may be required and otherwise to act as authorized representative of the applicant, being the City of Northampton, in connection with the application, that for the purpose of said loans, if awarded, shall be to fund construction activities and that if said award is made, the applicant agrees to pay those costs which constitute the required applicant share of the projects. Uh, I hereby um, we need this. this. This thing goes for days, but I, don't think I have to read <laughs> no, yes. the other pages of that. So move to recommend. Move to recommend. Second. All right. All in favor? Um, Aye. Do you have questions for His Honor on this one? This is simply, the plant's been done for a while. This is simply a wrapping up of the funding. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions for the mayor or the finance director? All in favor of a positive recommendation, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. And he's also requesting two readings on that. Uh, in, in the main meeting, yeah. And the final one in finance. Upon the recommendation of the Office of Planning and Sustainability and Counselor Eugene Tacey, whereas the Open Space and Recreation Plan 2011 through 18 and the Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan recommend expanding rail trails and non motorized vehicle opportunities, and whereas in accordance with the 2010 City Council approval, the city holds an easement for the extension of the Neurotic Rail Trail that extends part of the way to South Main Street in Haydenville on land owned by the town of Williamsburg and a neighboring property owner has um, has a garage partially on the city easement and Williamsburg's land and where uh, the same neighborhood property owner owns a parcel of land with an existing gravel road that could provide great access from the existing rail trail easement to South Main Street in Haydenville and it is in the city's interest for the rail trail to extend to South Main Street so that the trail will no longer be dead end and, and that such and as such would like to purchase such an easement, um, whereas private funding will pay the $5,000 acquisition cost with no cost to the Northampton taxpayers and no new appropriations. Now, therefore, it be ordered, the city council authorizes the mayor to purchase a new shared easement with the town of Williamsburg from the existing trail easement to South Main Street and as part of the same transaction further authorizes the mayor to release, um, to release of its easement under and within 15.1 feet of the existing garage encroachment if the general court allows such easement to be released in accordance with Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution. And whereas further the City Council hereby petitions the general court for such relief under Article 97. Move, move, move to, to recommend. Okay. Second. Okay. Discussion? Anyone you want to hear from? No? Uh, Councilor Tacey. Uh, well, well, we'll do it at the full council. Yes. We'll do it in full Great, council. Yeah. All right. Any other? Then all in favor? Aye. 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 In finance? 
Opposed? No? Thank you. And I believe that wipes up the finance portion of it. I just asked for finance. Oh, oh, please. I'm sorry. I, I forgot to mention on those legal judgment orders, I did want to request if we could do two meetings on that because we're trying to get the but it's, it's system. It's so listed on the agenda. So, with it. Um, so move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay. Aye. 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 Thank you. We're reconvening. And uh, let's get right to those final four, shall we? Uh, this is, uh, well, do you want me to waive reading? No. Uh, this, is, this is upon the recommendation of the Finance Committee, Mayor David J. Narkwood, Council Dean Casey. Yes, please waive reading. Okay. Yeah. I just heard it. All right. All right. Uh, I'll accept a motion. Put on first reading. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Tacey, do you want to? I think um, when the bike path was first coming into town, I took my kid on a bicycle from Florence to the daycare. It was the greatest thing in the world. It was brand new, the bike path, and I'm a huge supporter of this. And I was kind of a little uh, upset when it didn't go all the way through Williamsburg when that kind of crapped out. And um, I was actually pleasantly surprised at, um, if, I, if you kept a tally, the was overwhelmingly bike path as opposed to uh, the two and a half override tonight at uh, <laughs> I was just, uh, I couldn't believe it. It was all bike paths. There's this little rail trail that is getting on towards Williamsburg. It just shows the passion that's involved in the community for this particular um, this thing. And it is a form of transportation. Um, and a lot of my uh, constituents on Ward 7 like the fact that it is TRG. This, and they would like it to be trap rock gravel rather than, than pavement. But that is as we have discussed before that is in the detail which will come up later on just exactly how it gets uh, completed but the arch uh, is in desperate need of some work um, for any of us that grew up here we spent many days underneath that arch fishing and the fish didn't hang out there we just like being under there um, but anyway it would be really a shame to lose it and uh, I am in full support of this and it is it is all about the community there um, for myself and I would like to see it used for transportation between Williamsburg and wherever the bike path will take you. So I really do support this. I, and you all know about my feelings about grant money. Um, and this is not a transportation grant money, but if we had this in our budget, I would support this also if it came out of our general fund for this particular item. So um, I will support this. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, any other comments on this? There's, there's no boathouse related to this, right? <laughs> there's not. Yeah. There's, there's, no. there's a bike house. <laughs> the, the fever bike bike house. <laughs> 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 boat house. It will have to wait for another day. Uh, and it will be lively. And it will be a lively debate. Um, no other discussion on this? There's a roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Boyd? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. 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 Suspend Rule 14. Second. The motion's been made to suspend Rule 14. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Reading. There's a motion for second, second reading. And there's a second. Uh, any discussion on the second reading? A question. What Council What's the need for the two readings tonight? Um, it count, uh, Mr. Fryden, as you recall, presented this. Uh, he said it. The timing of it. At the last meeting, and we had to right. send it through finance. We did, we were, and we did we did it with the promise that we would do two readings. So, okay. um, roll call, please. Can, can, oh, Council Freeman Daniels. Can I just say, and I, don't, I hate to nitpick, but no, you don't. Uh, <laughs> go for I, it. Then I, then I, then I, I won't, I won't say it. Right out there. Not a boathouse. No, no, now you've been shamed into something. You go, no, no. <laughs> no? All right. No nitpicking, I no guess. Nitpicking. So, yes. Aye. Yes. 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 It has been approved unanimously by the City Council that the the rail trail extension. Um, for, for those folks who were waiting and those folks watching at home and those folks desperately scouring Chad Kane's article tomorrow. Um, 
This upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, this is the financial order for $238,877.64 be appropriated from the FY13 general fund undesignated fund balance to the to the account Move that to you were Move Second. First reading. Well, there was a motion. There was. There was a second. Yep. I did. Okay. Any discussion on these further? Roll call. Uh, roll call, please. Aye. Yes. 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 Suspend rule 14. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend rules. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Let's accept a motion for the second reading. So, so moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Another roll call, please. Yes. 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 This is the uh, financial order that's upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, and this is uh, ordered that $55,869.64 be transferred from legal judgments to fire salaries permanent for the Michael Hatch et al. Uh, versus City of New Hampshire, Massachusetts et al. Move to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Suspend rule 14. Second. Oh, motion I think, to does he want two readings on this one? Yes. 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 There's a motion to suspend the rules and it's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll accept a motion for the second reading. So move. Second. Any further discussion? All please. Yes. 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 Okay. There's been a request for two readings as well. This is uh, on the recommendation of the mayor, authority to file. Uh, this is to, to close out the water filtration uh, plant construction project. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Casey? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Freeman Danny? Aye. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Suspend rule 14. Second. Motion to suspend rules. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Accept a motion for the second reading. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 The next order only requires one reading. Uh, this is the release of Eastman and Purchase of the new easement for the Norwatic Rail Trail. Accept the motion. Move approval. Second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Lard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Next up is the financial order appropriation of $95,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding for the hall renovation and preservation project. This is the second reading. Accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Just a point of yep. information. information. I can see where Owen Freeman Daniels saw the light through the through the towers. <sighs> so, oh, oh, oh! The correlations on the yes. Okay, I thought we were getting checked it out today. Me too. I thought. 
I thought we were talking about his personal evolution. The bag's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a cave, not I'm not uh, not, not towers. So uh, crenellation. 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 Battlements. The battlements. Control move. The financial order is an appropriation of $10,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding access to housing initiative project. This is second reading. I'll accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. second. Any discussion on this? No? No. We went through it. No, it's okay. We're having it. We're, we're, nit we're like we're having nit picking and, you know, okay. it's social grooming over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> So. Roll, roll call, please. <laughs> yes. Aye. Yes. 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 This next up is the authorization. This one was a second reading, too, wasn't it? Request second reading. This is the uh, first yes. second reading. This was the second reading. This is the second reading. This was the second yes. reading. That was the second reading. That was the second reading. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Was it read last time? I wouldn't hear, but this is the in the parenthesis it says it was. What number are we on? We're on number eight. This is the financial order authorization to expend funds from the tourism gift account to accept uh, gifts of personal property. It's been amended from the Arts Council. Uh, accept the motion to put it on the floor. Move approval. Second. 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 Okay. Any discussion? Councilor Adams? Uh, one small thing. I. I approve generally of what the Arts Council has proposed here um, but I noticed that in reading it thoroughly carefully that it sort of I think possibly inadvertently created a, an expiration date for itself um, in the last paragraph uh, it states notification will occur regardless of the funding or gift source and before the project may proceed the Arts Council will determine whether the project pursuant to the City of Northampton ordinance should be coordinated by the Arts Council. I think that um, inadvertently what they've done is is uh, essentially, I think they're referring to Ordinance 2249C, and that, I believe, that ordinance which creates uh, the, 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 uh, that agency, that, that branch of the administration, um, will have an expiration date. And I think that expiration date will occur by September of 2014, because by the new ch under the new charter, um, the mayor has to reorganize his government into um, by pursuant to administrative orders. So I, I think I suggest and I propose that simply by deleting the language pursuant to the city of Northampton ordinance, uh, by deleting that language, I think we will um, remove the language that creates an expiration date. I'll say, so you're making that as a friendly amendment? It's a friendly. Second. Yes, oh, that's a friendly so that's amendment. That's a second on the friendly amendment? Yes. Second friendly. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? Yep. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, now back to the original motion. Um, any other discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. 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 And that's the final reading of that. It is. All right. This is second reading. Um, <coughs> excuse me. A uh, special election ballot question for Proposition 2.5 override of $2,500,000 is second reading. I'll accept a motion. Put it on. So moved. Second it. Any discussion about this? Uh, Councilor Tate. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when I cast my vote <clears throat> not to put it um, on the ballot, I don't I think want to. you abstained. You abstained. What's the same No, no. I'm talking about right now. Oh. Right. Oh, oh, I see. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, when I cast my vote uh, not to put it on the ballot, it's not a vote against the school or public safety. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is what I think uh, is in the best interest of the email battery that I have received <clears throat> um, in the last couple of weeks about this. And 
people that absolutely cannot afford this for one reason or another and there are exemptions for some uh, and three overrides in four years I think um, we're getting to a point <clears throat> I, the water and sewer rates this year only went up about three percent um, but they've been going up nine percent every year since they went up twenty two and a half percent in 2002 and last year it was said by the Board of Public Works that the water and sewer rates would continue to go up by that percentage for years to come this year they went up two percent the only reason that I can think it only went up two or three percent in water and sewer this year was maybe there was an override coming up and it was looming on the on the horizon everybody saw it and that would help uh, soften this blow but I'm looking into the future and I can see water and sewer next year going up 10% um, and I was I was actually dumbfounded at the amount of people that showed up for the rail trail and I thought when I got the emails I thought this place was going to be mobbed for people supporting two and a half override and it really wasn't um, so anyway uh, I also have people in my ward that were actually shedding tears in the assessor's office in the last week or two about this. Um, I have retired municipal workers on my ward that absolutely cannot afford to pay additional taxes. And as a matter of fact, one house went on the market just today as we speak. Um, and. They worked here all their lives in the city of Northampton and gave their service to the city of Northampton. And now it's like a thank you very much. We're done with you. Move on. Um, and so I will not sacrifice uh, a few at this point for the good of many or however you want to put it. Um, I, will, I cannot support uh, the two and a half over. A very good friend of mine emailed me and said they were dismayed at my abstention last time. Um, I have many friends that teach in the public school system. Uh, and, but I have to put all, I put all that friendship aside. Um, that's not my job to be friends with anybody um, on this. It is to do what I think is in the best interest of my constituency. And therefore, when this comes to a vote, I will vote um, not to put this on the ballot. Uh, just a couple of points and I feel like every time the override comes up <clears throat> I say the same things but there's something a little different to add which is if you go back to when the state legislature um, had their final discussion about the language of the override there were 17 points that they made in terms of when communities would do the override um, that language if you read the discussion the assumption would be the assumption was back then that the override overrides we're going to become commonplace and necessary for local communities. If you read the debate that took place, that was the assumption. Because it was clear then in Councilor Tasley, for example, you have a business, and if I said to you every year, your income on the business is, can only go up 2.5%. Your expenses, your electricity, your wages for your employees, your medical insurance for your employees, everything else is going to go up depending on how it goes up. You know, some of it by 10%, 8%, but most of it's going to go up a lot. But you can only take in 2.5% more. The assumption would be you're going to have to get the money from somewhere. In this discussion by the state legislature, it was very clear that the legislators, when they were writing this, assumed that this was just going to be okay. This is the way towns and cities are going to do this. They're going to pass overrides in order to fund the city. Because in the discussion, you'll see that they knew back then that 2.5% historically is not an inflation rate, which all of these services were never under 2.5% historically. So therefore, this was what came out of the, if you read this language with the 17 points, it's pretty clear. They said, okay, you're going to have to pass overrides by the city. Now, in a, in a political way, what happened was those who, a lot of people who disagree with needing to raise taxes in, in cities or 
don't want to raise more taxes. Successfully, we're able to reframe this as if overrides, and we just heard it now, as if overrides were like, oh my God, we had a few of these in the last few years. Well, in fact, that was what came out of the, and it was a very clever way to do it. But I'd like to reframe this, that overrides are the way that we need to look at how we're going to fund this city and how other cities are going to do it. Because it is just unrealistic to think you're going to be able to fund a city when you can only grow at 2.5% in addition to some new growth, where your expenses are going to go up more than 2.5%. And it was interesting that Councillor Tacey also tied this into stormwater. Because the other piece that I have said before is if you go back and look at the from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the federal government was far more involved in the infrastructure especially of the towns and cities and even rural areas in this state and in this country. So things like the parking garage were funded by the federal government. Part of the arrangement in the contract at that time and the philosophy was, okay, we paid, we actually paid a higher percentage in federal taxes, if people go back and look, and you do the comparable thing, taxes, federal taxes, essentially have gone down from where they were in the 70s through the 80s. In the 90s, Clinton increased them a little bit. The Bush tax cuts went in. Most of those tax cuts for, for most of us are still in place. So the federal government is taxing us less. But part of that arrangement has become, OK, we're getting tax less. We're also getting less money from the federal government. It was a federal government. If you look back before the, even before the, the 90s, you will see that the federal government was stepping in to do things like helping us with roads, helping us with dams, helping us with the stormwater. They put in a lot more money on those things. Well, they're not doing it anymore. And that's part of what's happening. And the question is, now that the federal government isn't doing this and we're not getting that money, we're getting less money from the state, it's are we going to do that ourselves? I don't want to pay any more taxes. One, one last point, and then I'll let Councillor Labarge have the floor. One gentleman who stood up who was against the override, by the way, the override count was eight people spoke for it and four people spoke against it. Um, he spoke about in 21 years that his property taxes have doubled. Well, in 21 years, just strictly on inflation and in real dollars, that has not gone up very much. So that was not a strong argument for me. Mm -hmm. Because over a 21-year period, you would expect just strictly from inflation that in real dollars that you would go up considerably more if taxes have increased dramatically. So I was actually surprised at that argument because it means that in real dollars taxes haven't gone up very much at all, at least for that particular gentleman. So again, I don't think anyone like, likes to pay more taxes, but the question is who's, who's going to take responsibility for running this city? Councilor Labarge. Thank you. Um, like I said last time, I'll support placing it on the ballot. I think as a consular, I don't have rights to say to somebody, you cannot go into the polls to vote. No matter what comes in front of me, as long as I've been here as a consular, and we've had um, questions and ballots that had to be placed at the polls, we always approve them. That's your voting rights, no matter who you are. And even I have many people on my ward. Believe me, I've been into the homes for the past three weeks. And one of my residents was here tonight, which you all knew, okay, which he is absolutely correct. He's not going to support it. I think it's the time now, okay, we're coming out of this recession very, very slowly, very slowly. I have many people on my ward who still are collecting unemployment, trying to find jobs, and they cannot. I have some people who, yes, will support it. I am saying as a city councilor that if you want to support it, then mark yes. If you feel that you cannot support it, then mark no. And don't be embarrassed about it. I have some residents who are telling me they have children in high school, and I've even told Pam about it, and they, they just feel like, in their hearts, they would love to do it, but they cannot. The husband has lost his job. The wife is working full time. It's become very, very difficult. And I told them, you mark it the way you feel and how you want to go in there to vote. And that's it. I'm not going to pressure anybody on how to vote. 
but we do need to look at facts. And I, I have to agree with what I heard tonight from one of my residents that it's just not the override, it's what's coming down the line. It seems like everything's coming all at once. And I think if that was not happening, probably things would have been differently. But I will support placing it on the ballot. And as a counselor, I am telling my residents and many people and families that I know in this city, which is large, if you want to vote yes for it, then vote yes. If you feel you cannot vote for it, then vote no. And I do have a large family and many friends in this city. So I'm not going to pressure anybody. I want them to go in there and feel to vote the way their heart is. So. Uh, Council Schwartz, Council Carney, Council Daniels, and Council Tate. So I support the override, and I, I support it um, with both great clarity and, um, and a heavy heart. And that heaviness comes from the fact that we are required, uh, we are, we're, we're f put in this position of keeping ourselves afloat in a really basic way, keeping ourselves afloat because of what we've lost on every higher level of government. And I'm going to focus on the state because really that is where, while the federal government, all the budget priorities are vast and vastly, need, I do believe, need reordering mm -hmm. and have a direct consequence um, to our condition as a community, we can track in very dollar, dollars and cents the loss on the state side. And if you look at since fiscal year 2002, the number, the amount of state aid that we got then if it was level funded since fiscal year 2002, if we were level funded in state aid, mm -hmm. we would have had $35 million more by fiscal, by, by fiscal year 13. We have been covering this immense hole year after year after year. And it is no mystery why we're in this position, why we're faced with this difficult choice. I call it difficult because it is no, it is, it's not a pleasure to me to raise my own taxes or have anybody else's raised. But while that's difficult, the alternative makes the choice extremely clear to me and I hope on balance to most of our community. Mm -hmm. In the end, what we're looking at is a, an extreme compromise to our kids' public education and to our public safety. We're looking at the loss of high school busing. I mean, we are literally saying to those working families who are, who are working on a shift where they can't get their kid to school at 7.30 in the morning, they don't have an extra car lying around, we're saying figure it out. I mean, is that what we do as a community? We, we say figure it out, figure out how to get to school. We're not providing you with busing anymore. We're talking about how higher sports fees. We're talking about the loss of art and music. We're talking about a whole, the, the get cutting into the core of what makes our education system great. And it's not find the, to find out how to tighten the belt. We've been tightening the belt. We're tightening the belt to the point where there's not enough oxygen. We will really pay the price, and we need to stare at this choice. And I, I sincerely hope and have faith in our community that with the hard work that this choice may require for some families, and I respect that hard work, I respect the digging deeper, that on balance we will decide that we have so much more to gain all together. All together, each person, even those that are struggling, that in the end, that it, the value of protecting our public education and the value of our public safety will be great enough to dig deeper because there is no other alternative. When people say, "We've," I heard, "Let's find, let's find another way." We've done it. We have found. I, 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 countless other ways. We just saved a million dollars by moving into the state health insurance system. I mean, we have, we're, it's continual, the finding. We are at the end of the line. This is the end of the line for protecting the core of our public education. And I believe and hope fervently that we will vote yes. I, I trust we're going to vote yes tonight on balance. And that on June 25th, we will all dig deep and do what it takes to ensure the quality of our community for our kids and ourselves. Uh, Councilor Karn. Thank you. Um, I, I don't want to repeat what many other folks have said tonight, not only from the public, but my colleagues here. But I will support placing this on the ballot, and I will also support its successful uh, passage on June 25th. I'll uh, encourage people to, to vote yes on this override for a number of reasons. And um, 
many of those have been stated. But the most really is that um, we can't afford not to. Um, while this is a difficult, uh, uh, well, these are difficult economic times, and it will be, you know, it will require digging deep for, um, for residents who will have to, you know, we're talking a couple hundred dollars more a year, and that is a real hardship for many people. I would encourage those for whom it, it is extremely uh, difficult to uh, seek whatever assistance, whatever um, uh, waivers or easements that they could get through the um, um, assessor's office. But um, it's clear that we have no choice. We cannot afford to have our, uh, our schools uh, deteriorate to, uh, to, to the loss of 30, possible 30 teachers and police and fire. Um, and uh, I'm extremely disappointed in what came out from the House budget and the level of uh, state assistance that we've received. I'm disappointed, but that's not something we can do anything about right now. What we can do is what the state has given us the opportunity to do, and that is to um, override the uh, two and a half cap that, we, that, we, that they uh, imposed upon us some 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, again, I, I will not only support placing it uh, on the ballot tonight, but I will uh, public, publicly support its successful passage on June 25th. Councillor Freeman Day. Thank you. Um, I won't um, uh, reiterate the, uh, the articulate and, um, and uh, timely uh, comments from the councillors from um, one two and four um, but I, I will say that my support of the of the override uh, is very similar to, to their sentiments for me the vote tonight though is relevant to the a uh, number 2.5 million dollars uh, the council really has a decision to make about uh, the size of the uh, of the override um, ballot question uh, I don't think that there's anything unfair or um, Unreasonable. In fact, I think it's very fair to uh, to to raise taxes above a certain level uh, with the consent of the governed uh, through a uh, through a, a democratic vote, and uh, I think that's part of the uh, part of the the, the spirit behind to, uh, the proposition two and a half uh, language. Uh, so I think it's the fairest way um, you can raise taxes, and um, uh, but. Uh, the question for us tonight, I think, is about how much to raise them, or how much, at least, to put the put the put it to the public, uh, to ask them to uh, to do a million, two million, two and a half million, and um, for that, I uh, I think the council expected the mayor to come in with a uh, proposal, and the mayor, I think, came in with a uh, very good proposal, uh, one that is, uh, shows planning and uh, forethought and uh and intelligence and uh I, I think it's also going to be difficult um but uh, i have to uh, laud the mayor for his uh his uh, conservatism when it comes to the budget the last one that we passed which was his first budget was uh um was uh, was was stringent and strict and conservative and involved cuts last year and uh i think uh that this is a good plan that the two and a half million dollar uh override number uh, is a is a very reasonable proposition to bring, or very reasonable proposal to bring before the uh, for the public, uh, and uh, and I have confidence in the leadership of this city uh, to uh, to see it through for the uh, foreseeable future. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Adams, and then Councillor Casey. <coughs> I, I I echo and won't reiterate um, any of the statements from the councillors one through four, but I agree with all of them, and. The only thing I will say is, is simply that, um, aside from all the reasons that were clearly in, articulated, I think that we, well, I know we all rely on public services. We all do. But I think that the people who rely on them most are frequently people who have less. And I think that good public services is a way to level the playing field. And if the override doesn't pass, and I support putting it on the ballot, and I also support its passage, I believe that our level of services will be reduced um, to an unacceptable level. And I think the people who will be hurt most 
will be primarily those who have leased. And so I support this, the override for, for numerous reasons, but uh, the fundamental principle beside, b behind my support is based on social justice. Thank you. Councilor Tacey. Yeah. Um, and I'll just, I won't get all involved again, uh, but I will say that comparing a business to municipality um, funding is like peas to watermelons. I mean, competitive marketplace uh, that uh, you do your bidding or your pricing, however you do it, and you're either in business or you're not. Um, and I don't see where that really comes into play with a municipality. And I, I will stick with all of those who really cannot cannot dig any deeper. Um, but as far as the state and the federal assistance, the feds are the ones that have really cut us. They have cut us by 85 percent in the last very few years. It might be a smaller percentage of our entire budget, but the amount of money they've cut us by is, is enormous uh, in percentages. And much of the state money that we do get also comes from the feds. So, and much of the state money that we don't get also comes from not getting it from the feds. But uh, Council LeBarn talked about we're coming out of a recession at this point, and she's, I think she's right. Um, and, but in the paper, the Gazette had an article today or yesterday where the feds are warning uh, uh, municipal or, or municipalities and politicians across the nation that raising taxes right now is weakening the economy. So, um, and for all of the things I said before, uh, uh, I'm not going to support uh, but, and I won't, I won't vote for the override. I'm going to vote no when the override comes around. And I was one of the kids that ran around in the Food Mart parking lot and asked people if it was okay if we put bumper stickers on their cars that said, stop, prop, two and a half, vote no, question two. Now, that was an activity that was put together by the Northampton Fire Department. And today, I had two retired firefighters in my driveway saying how wrong that they thought they were. So I guess history will tell us whether or not I even get elected again. Uh, Councilor Murphy. Um, as I did in first reading, I'm going to support putting this on the ballot again tonight. And, and my support for this is not my recommendation of a yes vote or my endorsement of a no vote, but my recognition of my obligation to my constituents to let them weigh in on this issue the way they feel is appropriate for themselves, their families, and their finances. And I feel that that's my obligation, but it's their obligation to actually go to the polls and vote their conscience, vote their pocketbook, vote their kids, vote whatever motivates them. But I do not, I cannot reconcile not giving them that right to weigh in. It's our job to run the city the way the voters of Northampton tell us to do that, and it's unconscionable to me not to offer them the opportunity to send that message to us and say, do it this way or do it that way. You know, we're, we're going to have to make the budget fit what the voters' pocketbooks tell us they can afford to do, but it would be unconscionable to me not to give them the opportunity to weigh in. So as I did the last time, uh, I will support putting this on the ballot. <coughs> One last thing. I do. I have. There is no doubt in my mind that this is going on the ballot. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. My vote is merely symbolic. So, thank you. Any other comments? No. I'm going to ask the council's indulgence to speak after the vote on this point. It, it, it will all be brief. Uh, there's a roll call requirement, please. Yes. Symbolically, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Symbolically, no. <laughs> yes. Yes. An unqualified yes. Hi. I don't think we didn't need a roll call. call. I think it's important that this was reflected in the roll call. Um, so, um, 
for those paying attention home, I'm actually precluded from opining on any particular issue as we vote until Thanks after the finance director. Hey, good night, Susan. Good night, Susan. <laughs> and um, so I do get to <coughs> after the vote to more or less explain my vote. Um, I obviously supported putting this on the ballot for the reasons stated that everyone else has said. I also will be voting in favor of this when the when the time comes. Uh, and my concern is the debate going forward. We've had, because this is a very emotional issue, this has been, every override has been very divisive um, to the point where it's essentially personal and families stop talking to other families and friends stop talking to other friends because it's, and, and what galls me is that we have these divisions that are essentially imposed on us because we have a profoundly dysfunctional way of subsidizing the things that we demand. We, uh, you actually, Councilor Specter and 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 uh, Councilor Schwartz actually laid out the historically pretty much the situation that we find ourselves in. We have we've gone from stating to the world at large that we hate taxes. And we cut income taxes, and then, which is a progressive tax system, and instead, without cutting the services or the need, the need still exists. We, do, we are now left with this dysfunctional system of subsidizing this with a regressive tax, a tax not based on people's ability to pay, a tax that creates the pressures that Councilor Casey described for people who live here. But it should be pointed out, a lot of the people who spoke against it tonight, and a lot of people who spoke about it in commented on the fact that this is a pressure that they cannot manage along with all the other financial pressures they're experiencing. Uh, one gentleman is a pensioner from the city of Northampton, police officer, retired. It's pension pressures in large part that's actually contributing to this in, a, in, in no small amount. He was railing against entitlements. He is receiving entitlements. And the fact is, I also heard this, this preposterous argument saying that renters should be excluded from the vote. That's awesome. The fact that we are discussing the fact that citizens aren't allowed to vote or not qualified to vote on any particular issue is, is grotesque. That's wrong. That's not the conversation we should be having. Awesome. The conversation we should be having is the one that I think it was framed rather well by Councilor Schwartz is the issue of priorities. And, and Councilor Tacey said the same thing. These are issues of priorities that, that are, we are determining what has value to us. What's the cost benefit analysis ultimately? What do we want and desire? Now, unfortunately, you hear a lot of people say you're going for an override because you're spendthrifts, you don't pay attention to the bottom line, that you have these, the, these extravagances, although I've yet to hear what they, these extravagances are. And they're not those are not substantiated discussions. Mr. Patillo's point was, I thought the way that he presented the argument was reasonable. I think that's, that's part of the reasonable, reasonable discussion. The true and real pressures that are put on people. We don't need to go after other people, pro or con, but the fact is, is that let's talk about what it is we're really doing with this vote. And it is the one dimension of Proposition 2.5 that I agree with, which is exactly what Councilor Spector laid out, which is we are asking permission. And we've been put in a position where we are so, to solicit the government, as, as Council Freeman Daniel said, to ask them, what do you want us to invest in and how do you want us to invest it? That's essentially, it's not fully written in the language, but that's essentially what we're doing. And this is the one, the one price pressure point in someone's life that they actually get to speak in public against. They get to vote for. You can't vote on a gas increase. You can't vote on the cost of, of, uh, of laundry detergent or foodstuffs. You have to make these frequently horrible choices. But in this instance, you have the opportunity to say yay or nay. But don't say nay because you think somebody's trying to push you out of the community. And don't say yay because you think that uh, there are people trying to subvert the, 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 uh, the, the rudimentary systems of public safety, clerical work, uh, and education as well. 
Those are not the point, the talking points that we should have. That is my, in I entreat this community as we go forward in this debate and discussion that it be civil, thoughtful, respectful, and recognize that we're all manacled together by circumstances and bad policy that's been crafted far above us, leaving us literally just this one option. We have only this one. We can't have a city tax. We can't come up with magical fees. It's against the law. This is what we've got. This is the hand that we're dealt. We play the cards that, see, that we see and not the ones that we wish we had. So that said, I, I will, yes, be voting yes for this. Okay. I will, and, I, and, I, and I'm actually very glad, and I think it's wholly appropriate, as the Council LaBarge said, that this is very appropriate, and Council Murphy, that this go on the ballot. And just so people at home are watching, I think some people would choose this vote tonight would make it so that suddenly that we would have a proposition to an half override based on this vote. It's not that simple, and nor should it be. Um, so uh, good luck to us all as we go forward on this point. A actually, that's the, the, the did you discussion I, after the first reading. I did not. Okay, I did not. No, I, no, no, this has been bottled up for some time. Just check so it. It's just, uh, uh, thank you all for bearing with me on that little rant. I appreciate that. Um, back to business at hand. And by the way, that will be on the ballot. It's passed. Uh, this is the order designation of the Roundhouse parking lot property as priority development site. This is the second reading. I'll accept a motion. Move second reading. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. This is uh, an ordinance uh, to, uh, upon the recommendation of the planning board. This is uh, to amend an attachment rezone watershed protection throughout the city. This is the first reading. You want, uh, do you want me to waive reading, or would you like? Yes, it's lengthy. It's, 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 it's a technical document. Yes. It is a technical document. So the, the, there's a motion to put it on the floor, and there's a second. Yeah. Discussion, please. I move I, to recognize uh, Wayne. Second. Uh, actually, Wayne's already recognized. Oh, okay. Hi, Wayne. Hi. <laughs> so the short version for this is we have two different flood floodplain districts. Special Conservancy of the district along the Connecticut River and watershed protection is the rest of the city. We're, in essence, trying to merge them together um, to simplify life so we have fewer districts, uh, to be fair for everyone so that if you own property in the floodplain district, you're treated the same regardless of where you are. In doing so, we're also looking at the boundaries of where the floodplain district is. Um, you know, we were mapped as a community in 1974 by FEMA. Um, maps have gotten more accurate over time. So there are places where the floodplain boundary, the FEMA map <coughs> is wider than what our zoning has, and there are places where it's narrower. Um, and so we're on the average, in, in most, in more places than not, we're narrowing the district. Um, what happened is the, there are some streams in town which FEMA didn't map, smaller streams, and the city had a 100-foot buffer along all those streams. In many cases, we don't need that full 100 feet. Um, we now have wetlands ordinance. We had wetlands ordinance for 20 years. So that allows us to get smaller than that. Um, there are a few places where we're going larger um, because the floodplain is, is larger than what we've currently mapped. Um, there's, there will to be a small floodplain protection overlay district. So usually SC is what's called an underlying district. It's the only district that's there. Um, and we're talking about <coughs> not allowing new buildings to be built in the floodplain. Um, there are a couple places in the floodplain which are existing commercial areas. We don't want to lose those areas. So in those areas, floodplain is an overlay on, on top of existing businesses. Any questions? Did you explain the difference between special conservancy and floodplain? So um, the difference sounds more on paper than it is in reality. Special conservancy says no new homes ever can be built in the floodplain unless there's already an existing home there. 
So six, seven, ten years ago, I don't have a good sense of time. We changed all the zoning in the entire 3,800 acres of the Panic River floodplain. And in that area, we basically we reduced the regulations if you already had a home there. So we made it easier to expand the home, easier to add an accessory apartment. But we said no new homes unless there's already one there. In the other districts, we say, well, you have to get a special permit and go through the process and we'll look at it. There has only been one special permit for a home granted, as far as I know, in 26 years in, in the floodplain. Um, and it was an area that was like <coughs> one inch into the floodplain. Um, so in theory, one could build a home in the flood, in the uh, uh, watershed protection overlay, but it hasn't been approved ever. Um, and if anything, we're probably going the other direction because we obviously get more worried at climate change and floodplain boundaries are actually growing. One, one of the climate change is you may get more rain or less rain, but you're more likely to get big, big episodes of rain, big storms, uh, and so floodplain boundaries are growing because of that. And so, but these little brooks and things on people's property. Yeah. If there's a wetland on that property, is it going to become a special conservancy? So, in those little brooks, the ones that aren't mapped by FEMA, yeah. for the most part, those are the areas where we're narrowing. So most of those little brooks now have an arbitrary 100-foot buffer along them. We're narrowing it down to what seems like the actual floodplain boundaries. So, yes, some of those little brooks will be special conservancy, but more of those areas would no longer be regulated. But the piece of property that the little brook is, is on will not all become special conservancy. The brook and what seems to be floodplain of the brook will be, but not the entire property. So what happens a lot is, you know, we had to send notice out for this, and we sent out, I've got a thousand notices, a lot of notices to the community. And people would panic and say, you're going to rezone my property special conservancy. But what happens is somebody has five acres of land or two acres of land, and in it there's a little brook that goes through. And yes, the brook itself and a thin buffer along the brook is floodplain, but the rest of the property is buildable and whatever old rules were continue to apply. Is there any place in the city that you th this will restrict building even if you did compensatory flood storage? Um, yes, but places where those things are already restricted. So again, along all those big brooks and, and streams, those areas already have very strict regulations in play. So we're changing what they are, but it's the boundaries are the same. The, the strict regulations, but it doesn't say no building. It, it says you need a special permit for it, and that's why it's saying no special permits been granted in all the years we've had this, except for this one home that was only a couple inches yeah. in the floodplain. Okay. I got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. My uh, one reservation to this in ordinance was the fact that these these FEMA maps, which is, are the basis for some of these contours, are 35 years old and older. And it's been my experience in working with them for that length of time that there are, there are errors on them. And when a property owner gets a survey of their specific property, and that survey is much more accurate than the FEMA map and determines that the elevations are different, and in fact, that individual's property should not be mm -hmm. uh, zoned that way. Um, that it would require them coming to the city and asking for a zone change uh, based on established fact of a survey that, in fact, their the map true. is incorrect in their instance and they shouldn't be burdened with the zoning. Mm -hmm. So they're going to need to do that. And I've spoken to the planning department about it, and it's uh, they'd indicated, and it is my hope that they stick with this, that that, that is not going to, it's still going to require a zone change, but that the planning department and the zone changes are something that we have to make, that we would be reasonable about that, that it, that it generally we feel it's good policy to go with the FEMA map, but if that property owner comes seeking relief because they've got a more accurate document, a specific survey of their property that indicates that the FEMA map is wrong, that both planning and this council would be reasonable and offer them the relief of changing the zoning to reflect the more accurate contours relative to their property. You know, my feeling is that that's only fair, and I would trust that not only planning but this council would react positively to somebody seeking that relief based on a factual document, a survey showing that they, they're not in, in the zone that we thought they were. Councilor Freeman, Dan. Common sense. Following up with, right. that, um, with the, that issue, is that, is that, is that new? 
so so what am I saying is if if this if this uh, change to the zoning map fails, and the watershed protection isn't uh, eliminated, um, will is is the predicament that uh, Councilor Murphy describes any easier for a homeowner? No. So that's basically a process we've had already. So at for example, um, the the Claren Hotel has done exactly what Councilor Murphy said provided more accurate mapping. Um, uh, Bob Bacon, um, or it might have been Payne, but the property on East Hampton Road it went through a, what's called a map amendment. So there's two types of, without getting too detailed, there's two types of survey things that can come forward. One is somebody says FEMA's wrong. Their analysis of the property is wrong. Atwood Drive is a good example. When the, when the maps were made in 1969, I guess, of Atwood Drive, Atwood Drive didn't exist. Atwood Drive is fill from when the interstate was built and they blasted away part of the mountain. And they brought the fill in and they raised the elevation. So the original maps didn't, you know, showed Atwood Drive as being eight feet in the floodplain or something. Six inches in the floodplain. Um, that kind of a change, big change, has to be proved by FEMA. If we didn't wait for FEMA to, to approve that change, the entire floodplain insurance program would be so that's very important to follow that. And, and so we've done that for big properties. The other kind of change that I think is probably more what Council Murphy has in mind is we know from FEMA tells us the floodplain elevation here is 123 feet. To believe it's other than 123 feet, we need them to change it. But, on, but the, if you look at the map, the map is wrong. The map says 123 feet is here, and the surveyor shows no, it's really over here. Those are sort of the more minor amendments that we do, routine, we do routinely. You guys have approved many of them. Um, most dramatically along um, Pomeroy Terrace and, and Bridge Street, maybe five years ago, we changed all the boundaries because the mapping was just better. We could, we could adjust to those maps. So we have done those steadily before the council, as either the big ones that are map change or the minor ones as we do better. Is this satisfactory to you? Mm -hmm. it, I have no expectation that uh, that it's going to be quick getting FEMA to recognize the changes, but it certainly would be, you know, to get the city to say, you know, you provided more accurate documentation, we're happy to move our boundary. I have no expectation it's going to be lickety split to get FEMA to do it, but it, for us, that, sat, that satisfies me. I just don't want to see a property owner in a position where uh, that a tangible fact they prove with a survey, we're not willing to recognize. I, I want us to cooperate and recognize it because it's more accurate, and, and that's that's a reasonable thing. So just, just to get it straight again, changing this zoning won't make it more difficult for a, a property owner to do the kind of amendment that, you, that you're talking about. That's correct. And that's why, I know I can't show this to you, but if you look to the original map on where we're growing, where we're shrinking, more land is coming out of the floodplain than being added to the floodplain. It's not our interest to, I guess it, the short answer is, it's not our interest, I don't think anyone's interest, to have one more inch of land in the floodplain than the, what the floodplain really is. So wherever the floodplain is, we don't want to cover anything more than that, but we do want to cover all the floodplain. Um, and, and just to clarify, I mean, it seems that Council Murphy is asking for an attitude as opposed to a law. And so that attitude goes as far as this room and this office. Um, going forward, there may be really different constituents of this group, and they may hold to the letter of the law. So that would be left to the The letter of the law would be where is the contour? If the facts say it's somewhere different, it would seem reasonable that anybody and any department would be willing to say, you know, you're right, this new information is more accurate and will give you, it's reasonable to give you relief, and that would be my well, Since you can't legislate reasonability, uh, <laughs> absolutely not. have to live with that, okay. Any other okay. discussion on this point? So this will be a good faith. Can I, can I just clarify this? The same attitude that Councilor Murphy is imploring into the future has been the custom. The custom. And this zoning, I think what's going on is that the zoning touches the, uh, the difficulty that a property owner might face uh, with a uh, less accommodating uh, planning 
and uh, and council, but uh, this zoning does not ask for any new faith or or um, or liberality when it comes to uh, those kinds of exemptions. Just to clarify, from my um, presence at the hearings, the joint public hearing, this actually relaxes the requirements on homeowners uh, um, for the most part. And in terms of the uh, map comparisons, that's present. Th th that's something that has to happen already. This is not imposing a new requirement on um, on homeowners, uh, property owners, from my understanding. So you know it. I saw this as something that actually makes it, it liberalizes uh, the ability to develop on this property. Right. I think it's true because, because again, two, two things. More properties are being dropped from the floodplain than being added. Some are being added as we get more accurate maps. More are being dropped. And the second is if you already have a home in the floodplain, the standards for expanding that home are more relaxed. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a new home, it is getting stricter. But. And it is, I mean, it is getting more accurate. And, and I can pour out an example in Ward 7. There used to be a watershed protection contour that ran through the middle of Greeley Avenue. Now, Greeley Avenue is way above anywhere there's going to be a flood, but some distance contour went right through the middle of Greeley Avenue, and we'll all agree it shouldn't be up there, you know, because you, you go off the end of Greeley Avenue and, and down to where, yeah, it's a flood issue at the bottom, but not at the top. And that's one of the places that this map corrects and says, you know, it's not going to flood up on Greeley Avenue. It's 100 feet above anywhere it's going to flood. But the old contour was up there, and so too was a, an unnecessary burden. So it does clean some up. Part of Front Street in an old map was in a floodplain. Yeah. Well, here's hoping that some future counselor, specter person uh, reinspecting the minutes this meeting will understand the attitude that we wish to go forward <coughs> and on review. Um, any other discussion on this point? Roll call, please. Yes. <coughs> yes. In good faith, yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. Home stretch. <clears throat> this is uh, the ordinance to amend uh, the Committee on Cultural and Recreation Services. This is a second reading. So moved. Second. second. Any discussion on this point? Yeah, I just again reiterating that I hope that this could be a, a model for future uh, uh, revisions to council committees. Noted. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 Next up is an ordinance, a second reading, parking prohibited at all times on Hockenham Road, Fair Extension Street. Move to approve. Second. Discussion on this point? Call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 And certainly, last but not least, this is a referral. Uh, this is mandated by the charter. This is uh, an ordinance to add Chapter 55, the elected officials compensation advisory board. And Move to refer. Referred to elect. Second. Move to refer. Second. Discussion. Oh, it comes from. Would, it be, would it be wise to refer to the finance too? I agree. So there's uh, just to point out, there's a time pressure here. There is, yeah. There's a council inspector. I don't know if you want to speak to that point. There is some time pressure because of some confusion and communication. Probably my fault on this that it's in the charter. We're supposed to have this done by a certain deadline. Um, what is the date? Well, wouldn't it be 180 days? 180 days, which is June 1st. I don't know what will happen, whether I'm sent to prison or something, if it doesn't go through by then. But <laughs> I think we can handle I think if it needs to go to finance, that's fine. I, I think what you'll see that this is really not a financial thing. It's about how to set up the structure of the committee. 
I mean, I'm not opposed ever for, to go to other committees, but I'm not quite sure why it would go to finance over some others, since it's really about structuring the compensation committee. It's not about setting finance. financial okay. stuff I've, at all. I looked, looked briefly at the ordinance. I, 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 saw, I saw it. The ordinance had it numbers salaries. in it. That's because it's required by law to have the numbers, the current salaries in there. But it's not a – that particular ordinance that's moving forward has nothing to do it's with the right. salaries. It has to do with the setting up of the committee. So for the sake, I, I would ask you just for the sake of moving it along, if uh, yeah, I, I will make a motion to okay, so the motion withdraw. withdraw. And I think if we look at the numbers, all it's doing is recognizing what they currently are. Yeah, it, does, yeah. it doesn't recommend a there. change. It says yeah. here's it's what they the are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, motion to refer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? There it is. Um, I did my updates in the uh, in one minute announcements just uh, but to remind you that that Pride March is on Saturday and White Council for having some treaties I will not be attending in drag <laughs> there's just nothing in my eyes actually drag for me is wearing a suit so I might do that <laughs> um, <be> well. <laughs> is there any new business oh while we were here at this meeting, we did miss the pig roast at Smith Vocational. What? Well, we can't vote on that. All right, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much.